Hello, everyone. Welcome to Popcast on the Rocks, episode 66. It's another Wednesday. We've got more amazing, fun stories to talk about. My name is John, and I am joined once again, as always, by Andrea. Hi, everybody. Good to be back. And for our video viewers, you'll see that we have a, uh, if you're a longtime fan, you know it's a returning guest. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's been it's been a hot minute. We were talking before about uh, when you were last on and Westworld, huh? Yeah, yes. man. I feel like uh, I feel like I I gotta make um, I gotta I gotta set aside more time for uh, uh, for more stuff like this. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, what have you? So besides podcasting. You know, you must be making time for uh, other things. So, oh, yeah. uh, so Loki, we'll get to that later. Sure, sure, sure. Anything else you've uh, managed to consume this week in the entertainment space that's awesome? And well, you guys know, know we, all, we all bring our special interests, but I'm a I'm a pogo player, so that's what that's what occupies my free time. So uh, I'm sure you guys can pogo out player. Yeah, Pokemon Go. Come on, John. It's the cool kid lingo. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, don't try to pretend you don't have an account. We're friends. Okay. So, what um, what's happening in that space? Uh, well, I mean, it's right now they're in the they're uh, in the middle of an absolutely ridiculous um, event. There's a little uh, beaver Pokemon called Bidoof, and they're making a uh, like a week and a half long event just about that one Pokemon. If if you uh, for any of you viewers oh, out there that are uh, a, that are Pogo curious, you should take a look at Pokemon Go's Twitter feed. It's Pogo been a riot. Curious. yeah yeah. <laughs> it's been, their I, Twitter feed's been a riot. The only thing I like that had passed my way that I saw about Pokemon Go recently was I think rollback of certain basically perks that they had done so you could play more yeah. easily from home. Yep. Um, and I'm hearing people pretty upset about that. Is that uh, accurate? Yeah, so they they expanded the interaction zone. Um, uh, so if you you have to be within a certain distance of of gyms and Pokestops and whatever to get spawns, and um, and they expanded the circle so people could spend more time at home. And they're rolling some of that stuff back. Although um, <clears throat> those features haven't gone live yet, so it, there's they tend to be pretty responsive, especially to their their online community. So we'll see if if all of those changes go uh, go into effect. They are actually doing a they're rolling out a cool new um video entertainment aspect uh sometime this week it hasn't uh, gone live on 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 my phone i run and run it on android but um it might have on, on andrea's they're uh doing a uh, a live uh um kind of a live mapping technology where they're going to kind of recreate your own environment uh inside the game instead of just the traditional uh, map so there's some there's some cool images coming out online from the from the beta where they're um so if you're if you have mountains in the background based on your geographic location, you're going to see those uh, when you're oh, okay. walking around. That that so um, kind of cool. It's it's really pretty remarkable how much um, how much they can cram into their their limited data and still make it accessible for everyone. So yeah, so no, I know they they uh, announced a sort of a partnership with Microsoft a while back. They did a little kind of uh, proof of concept demo with their Hololens. Okay. Um, just it's not a product, but someday, you know, someday. Sure, sure. It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's come a long way since the Game Boy Color. I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> sure. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just, uh, I just I want to interject in this conversation and say, do not let Chris fool you too much with his cool kid lingo over here, his you know pogo street slang. Because this is the same guy that also today at 4 p.m. turned to me and said, you know what I really want to watch right now? Jeopardy. Yeah. So we watched oh. Jeopardy at 4 p.m. Okay. <laughs> like a, like a mean, senior citizen. I was about to say, do you want dinner at 5, too? So. Yes, is the answer. <laughs> uh, well, how was Jeopardy? That's been a while. I mean... It's no longer Trebek, so it's on well, Netflix now. So all of the the entire archive is on Netflix. Yeah, it's, pretty wild. it's pretty fun to go back. And then the episodes are only like nine minutes long because they just go through the questions. So yep, 
None of the, okay. none of the uh, small talk they make every episode. It is a they, little sad, though, to see Trebek and know that, like, he's gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I've used to watch Jeopardy more, and now as I got older, I haven't. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I kind of go flies in the face of your... Your ageist narrative there, Andrea. <laughs> I just remember, like, that was, like, the thing. So when I was a kid, um, I didn't get babysat by my grandparents because they lived in other states. I got babysat by my great-grandparents because they were here and they were still, like, young enough to babysit me. Um, and that was, like, the thing at 4 o'clock. Like, everybody sat down and really watched Jeopardy and then followed immediately at 4.30 by Wheel of Fortune. And then it was dinner time. Yeah. It was dinner time. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. When I host a podcast, I want to make sure one of my uh, hosts uh, eliminates the 55 plus demographics. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone who's, uh, who's on Medicare right now. I, I <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like, you know, you've got diverse interests here. Like, you got your pogo street slang, and then you got your four yeah. o'clock Jeopardy. Yeah, yep. my man of many right. tastes. I have intention to get back into into some actual gaming, but I have a hard time letting go of the teacher schedule. So we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there in July. He did follow okay. along with me and play about two minutes of Resident Evil mm. when I was okay. when I was in my like you know hardcore gangbusters mode, and I had to get yep. through it. He was like watching me and suggesting things. He's like, "Oh, is it like Resident Evil Four where you do this?" and then. He had the control for a hot minute, just like learning the first person. So, sure. yeah. so I, I think uh, I think you might be tempted to get into that at least. Yep, I will for sure. It's all it's all uh, long uh, um, to do list now. So, yeah, I was saying what it, what is going to be the priority? Is going to be Assassin's Creed Valhalla or or yeah. Resident Evil or something else? Right. I don't want to, I don't want to be shamed uh, publicly on on Twitch and on YouTube for eternity but I, I might have a couple of uh, um Assassin's Creed uh, uh games that are still shrink wrapped so I got I got some more for you. I'm I'm not current on that series so we uh Sure. It's it's a, it's on the, it's on the to-do list for sure. Okay. Infant children tend to get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> just you know a couple years and you can put the controller and yeah. In your hands and yeah. <laughs> a couple 15 years and I'll be able to play on my own again. <laughs> she is yep. learning hand eye coordination right now. She's got good grip, so you know. Yeah. It's just so a hop, nice. skip, and a jump to, you know, press A and you I'll know. kill that zombie. <laughs> yep. Well, how about you, Andrea? Anything uh so you caught a little bit of the Jeopardy, I suppose. I did indeed. You know, and um yeah, I'm not I'm not saying I'm too cool to not watch it because I was definitely right there shouting out the answers with him. So, yeah. Um, so Jeopardy on Netflix and then just watching a little bit more Record of Ragnarok. Um, I am like, you know, making Chris's brain bleed uh, with the fact that I'm still watching old episodes of Roni. I'm almost caught up, though. Mm. I think I, I think I'm in like season 10 right now. So um okay chris chris pretends that he hates it but he definitely knows everything that's happening so <laughs> i you know i never thought i'd say it but i've uh i've myself both ashley and i have really fallen out of housewives this is the, sure. the least amount of housewives we've watched in years sure and uh yeah i i, know, I right? won't lie i'm honestly i'm still watching beverly hills mostly to see all of the like fallout with erica jane erica Girardi either way you want to know her um and mm. i watched the abc documentary the housewife and the hustler okay how is that um it's interesting it does provide a lot more detail on what's actually going on and what tom girardi actually did um okay. so that that part of it is like oh okay I, I like get to know what actually happened and like what you know people are accusing him of um so that that part was fascinating. Erica's not in it at all, basically, except for like them talking about her being a housewife and her extravagant lifestyle and like all the suspicions that his money was like funneled there to fund that. 
um, and to so fund. She's not necessarily her. involved. Like no, so she's they not independently in... made this. Yes, yes, she's. Not, they reached out to her for comment. She's been subpoenaed by the courts to testify, and she has not appeared either mm. voluntarily to talk to ABC or in the court um, to respond to her summons. So she's talked okay. to no one. Um, so basically, what they had instead was other housewives. They had um, Danielle Staub from Jersey. Okay. Um, and they had, oh, no. um, yeah, which, <laughs> um, and then they had, um, God, she was on Beverly Hills as like a friend for a season. She was the one with the ridiculous sunglasses. Um, the one who was like $25,000, these sunglasses. God, it's like old, old, She's old, like, friend, season- uh, which, which, oh, th- a long time ago. Yeah. I think it's like season four or five, like Dana, mm. Dana maybe is her name. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I like, that should tell you, like, you know, how close, you know, they got to any of the real people who know Erica. Right. So that part was, okay. like, less satisfying. But it was but it was very interesting to see, like, what's going on with that. Right. Okay. Well, glad you're keeping up for the both of us. Yep. Um, yep. Um, record Regnark. How long was that again? How long is it? Yeah, was that like a 26 episode thing again? Yeah, I mean, it's just one season, but yeah. One full season. You know, regular sized episodes, 20 minutes goes pretty quick. Yep. Yeah, I'm Um, liking that. Well, I got a lot of things in this week until like I realized. So for video viewers, you can see I have a nice brace on my hand now. Mm. Um, Oh, my God. So... So... I thought, Holy a cow. I thought that was a silent choice in pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's uh, yeah. I I have a broken bone. With oh my god! Purple, and uh, so wow. I I'm pretty lucky that it didn't um, like, in all my activity, didn't displace itself. You know, it's still straight. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm going to have this down for another week. And if it's still healing well and doesn't didn't shift, then it'd be another three weeks. Wow. Um, And then if there'll be any. If there's any rehabilitation from like not moving your hand for so long, (laughs) kind of thing, you know, but um, otherwise. Yeah. So so I had played some video games this week. (laughs) Quite a few. I I finished. some stuff i was playing it takes two um mm-hmm. and uh ratchet and clank i wanted to like give my two cents on ratchet and clank yeah um, the latest one um basically it's i've never finished any other ratchet and clank game but i really really enjoyed this one mm-hmm. i thought it was um it was a blast from the like super super clean the and like sometimes these games are trying to be cute and pixar like or whatever and it kind of fall flat it's not written well enough and this game mm-hmm. really uh excels at writing fun uh goofy characters without them being obnoxious it was constantly there's a robot that flies around and wants to be your best friend at different times there's one that wants to be friends with a giant beast or whatever that's trying to eat people um they the companions you have are interesting and i you know they added new characters they added uh, normally it's ratchet and clank they added rivet and another character i guess i won't spoil and um they're all just it's a really great zany awesome cast of characters so i would give it like if i'm re- reviewing it it's it's a four out of five. Um, Ooh, I ran solid. into a couple couple glitches. Um, I kind of had to restart, but it it was pretty minor. It wasn't a lot, and um, but if they get that all ironed out, it's it's top caliber game. It's not too long. You know, it's, it rewards you for the collectibles are easy enough. Um, and there's not like a million of them, so it seems tiresome and weary. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. If you have a PS5, the latest Ratchet and Clank, highly recommend. So nice. But then I was shifted to another game, and 
it was hurting my hand too much. I was trying to fight in game and going through that. And I was like, okay, this hurts. I'm going to have to wait. And then it was like the next day or whatever. I went and get it, get checked out for sure. So, sure. so I'm off of video games now, unless it's point and click. Oh man. Well, so. see now, now you have housewife time. Nah. <laughs> I'll do it, yeah. <laughs> uh no i've been uh i've been still watching demon slayer i've only got two episodes left oh, yeah. of that, and then i can watch the movie mm -hmm. um ashley and i are watching high rise invasion on netflix which is like What's that one it's um they're basically all on top of giant buildings in a city and they're connected by by bridges thin bridges and there's people in masks that are terrorizing them. And that's oh, okay. kind of the setup. And it gets really, it, when we first started the first couple episodes, we we're thinking, I don't know, it's a bit fan servicey, you know, some of the dialogue, I don't know. But this, after a few more episodes, the story hooked us enough that it's, it's just intriguing. Um, so it, I don't know if I can recommend it because there's so much, really high quality anime out there but yeah. we're having a really good time with it so okay um, so yeah yeah that's been that's been my week oh and I'm, I'm reading manga too i'm reading as well i've got uh apple sims if that's how you say it um that manga. would be my that would be my best guess <laughs> yeah. it's the same uh artist and author as blam that i just was absolutely oh yeah with. this is his yeah. newest newest stuff and uh, it's still coming out. So I'm on like volume five. I think volume seven comes out this July. So mm -hmm. yeah. how is it ranking compared to Blam? Um, I well, it, it doesn't. Blam is just one of my favorite things ever. It just okay. connects with me. It's one of those weird things that connects with me um, on like a deep level. And so sure. this is it. It's not matching that, but I am enjoying uh, enjoying the heck out of it. So still high quality. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Man, I got a lot, I got you, a lot done. You are busy. Uh, yeah. I feel like um, one of the reasons we maybe didn't uh, have so much media time this week is because Chris and I went to Red Wing uh, for a couple oh, of days okay. for our anniversary. Um, nice. We decided to like spur the moment, take a little trip. And we went hiking around the bluffs in Red Wing and like had fancy dinner and stayed in like a B&B. &B. It was really fun. It was a good time. What, um, Red Wing? Let's see. We were, I think we were literally just talking about going there. Oh, um, if yes. you were, do did it. Did you stay at St. James? We didn't. Yeah. We ate dinner at the St. James, though, on their okay. patio. Highly recommend. I okay. loved the food. Yeah. I loved the food. And I had a grape chili margarita that was like on point. When okay, I should know this, and I swear it's in my calendar. When <laughs> was your anniversary? It was Father's Day, um, <laughs> June twentieth. Oh, that's right. Okay, so that's why it. Overlaps. Yes, so we so we yes. went later because obviously gotcha. we were doing a, a lot for Father's Day on our anniversary, yes. so we were just like, let's celebrate later. Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, so well, we awesome. went there. Um, yeah, if you're, I mean, we don't. We didn't stay at the St. James, but if you uh, are thinking about eating there, definitely do it. Okay. Nice. I mean, they have a, they have a really cool um, kind of stone cellar uh, bar in the basement of the St. Yes. James, mm -hmm. which we wanted to go to, but we went down and it was, um, it was, a, it was a bro fast after a wedding. So we decided yeah. to oh, go okay. somewhere else. You didn't want to just blend in? I don't think there's <laughs> any blending to be doing. They were... Uh, they were covering an awful lot of square inches. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. But yeah. under the circumstances, it looked like a pretty cool place. Yeah, it was okay. pretty cool. Nice. Oh, and then yeah, they uh they have like five or six like options for B and Bs. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that's like a thing in Red Wing. It's like B and Bs all over the place. So sure. Yeah, we I stayed in one and enjoyed it. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I'm always yeah. a little like leery of bnbs because mm -hmm. i've just like the stereotype of film from films or something you know like, yeah a uh, little old couple you know and it's just really i don't know doilies everywhere i guess 
We were, but, staying, uh, we were staying in a, in a uh, Victorian uh, B&B, so there was definitely doilies, mm. but still, yes. still highly recommend. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 should, I should get over it because I have, the ones I've been in now are, have been good, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, well, um, I don't know if I mentioned it up top, but if you don't know already, we talk about pop culture things generally on here that we're interested in. Mm-hmm. And um, we usually do it over cocktails or something of the sort. <laughs> um, Chris, you look like you're you're almost getting on empty there. I am. Uh, are, you ce- yeah. <laughs> are, are you celebrating any of the uh, the drink holidays? We we aren't. Uh, we don't. We don't. We're not big wine cooler folks, and uh, uh, and star anise is not uh, not my jam. So uh, <laughs> I'm not really. Uh, um, we're not, but we're doing. Uh, we're we're drinking anyways. So okay, all right. Yeah. So yeah. we did, funnily enough, um, have an option for a wine cooler, but I decided against it because, like Chris said, we're not really wine cooler folks. What? Um, oh my gosh! You could have been angry or something like that. So. <laughs> Um, so I, instead I made us some, uh, gin and tonics, and then I also added a little lime to make it a little green to go with, uh, some color scheme of the show we're talking about tonight. So, okay. Nice. Yep. Nice. You're going to make Alan jealous there with your G and T. That's right. It is, it is a fine G and T too. Uh, so I'd. As Chris alluded to, uh, uh, July 1st, wine cooler oh, yeah. day. So um, if you're celebrating that, I feel like wine coolers have been surpassed by <laughs> seltzers. Yes, absolutely. I feel like the thing now is seltzers uh, when maybe it used to be wine coolers. Well, although it's, uh, you mean maybe it's before our time, but were wine coolers ever a thing with kids? Yes. Oh, okay. not with kids, I don't think. I mean, I was I always had the impression of sort of like, you know, you're you're older, you want to have a drink, but you don't really want to have a drink. So you have a mom a- crew. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. My, oh, my mom was definitely a Bartles and James. You know, she was yeah. she's mm-hmm. never been a heavy drinker either. So like she digs mm-hmm. that, you know, there's almost no alcohol in those. And it's just like pure sweet sugar. She she's yep. just, you know, <laughs> all about that life. So nice. That B and J life. Yeah. Yep, right. Bartles and James. <laughs> I love I love to say that. It makes me makes me think of like the catchphrase from one of our favorite shows, The Good Place. Bortles. Mm. Chris knows what I'm talking about. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> New quarterback uh, That's right. I'd have to start. But we're not NFL. Then, oh, what's that? So, well, this is not a NFL podcast. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I mean, well, we do talk about housewives, but uh, yeah, I don't know how much uh, football contribution I can make. That's right. Yeah, I was gonna say if we talk about football, it's usually me with something to say about the Packers or the Super Bowl or Tom Brady and how much I dislike Tom Brady. So you know, in the last few months, Andrew's gonna need a refill on that G and T if you get a time. I know, so I know. Into it. <laughs> yeah, Rogers is <laughs> Rogers is threatening to leave the Packers, so I'm definitely like in dire straits here if he does. To leave or re- to like retire? Leave. Okay. Okay. He wants to be traded to another team. They say they're not going to do Patriots. it. Patriots. And... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> oh my God. I would just freaking die. I would die. Oh God. Oh, I have to say, every time I see a story about the Packers or anything like that, I absolutely think um, Andrea is probably fuming because I never yep. see good stories for I um, know. Like, ones you'd be happy with. I know. I know. So. No. And this is definitely <laughs> one I'm not happy with. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then July 2nd, Anaset Day. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've never, I don't think I've ever had that. I haven't either. Like Chris said, so. uh, it's, the flavor's not usually my jam. I know we have some, um, like star anise or anise. Um, it's, it's licorice like, tasting, that's all, and I'm not a big licorice. Yeah, I mean, sure. we have some to make... Um, We've made like mold wine before, you know, and it's obviously a key ingredient right. in that. So we have it, but that's like the only thing we use it for. So, yep. Small doses. 
little bits yep. in there. Soup stocks, that kind of thing. Yep. So, all right. Well, I've got, I was going to just have a soda, you know, and I thought maybe uh, Mike would jump in and give me a heck about having a soda again. But uh, I chose a beer. It's a, right. uh, a beer from Sioux Falls, Remedy Brewing. It's called Remedy. Kickball. Yeah. Kickball. Um, it's a sour ale and it's very good. Mango Ooh. and guava flavored. That does sound good. Mm -hmm. I feel Refreshing. like I feel like the whole world is on like sours now. Like sours is like the big thing in beer. Yep. I wonder what the next phase is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's the next trend? Yeah. Hazy IPAs, Alan says. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, yep. Uh, Northeast or New England IPAs as well. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know anything about that. I guess New England. Oh, okay. Yeah, New England. Okay. Yeah. When you said Northeast, well, I immediately went to like grain belt Northeast. Oh yeah. Yep. That iconic green nope. can there. That's what I was thinking. I yep. was like, oh man, that's interesting trend for beer to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we're going to be talking after a little while, very spoiler heavy about, uh, the Disney plus series, Loki episodes one through three. Uh, if you're watching this live or uh, right when it drops, you'll the episode four will already be available. Yes. So you can um, pick this up and, and then see what you uh, what you think of episode four. Um, before that, we won't be spoilery and we'll be talking uh, some video game stuff. I see you found a few video game stories, Andrea. Yeah. I I'm going to transition, though, with uh, my beer that Ooh. I didn't add this story, but the beer reminded me of it. <laughs> okay. So it's Remedy Brewing Company, and Remedy is the game developer as well. And okay. they make one of my favorite games, Control. Right. They're also yes. known for Alan Wake. And um, they are creating sort of, it seems, a little bit of a, a franchise with this now and connecting these properties. And it was just announced today that... Remedy is working on a multiplayer version of something in the Control universe and okay. some sort of sequel or something follow up to the game Control as well. So nice. That should have you yeah. excited. I am excited. Control <laughs> was was very good. I hope that they, this rumored um, Alan Wake remake happens and I can go back and play that mm -hmm. as well. Because that game is pretty old, and I could use a, a new coat of paint. So, so yeah. That's my latest breaking story. What have you found in the video gaming space? Uh, a couple different things. Um, w one that I'm neutral about, one that makes me excited, and one that makes me mad. So okay, all right. Let's Cover let's start. Game. Yeah, let's start in neutral um, with the okay. fact that Sony has acquired. Uh, the Returnal developer, Housemark, I believe is how you say it. I don't think it's Housemarkey. Yes. Nope. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that is now, I mean, they've they've developed Returnal um, exclusively for PlayStation, but now it's like official that they're under Sony's umbrella, um, along with, mm -hmm. you know, a, a whole host of other game developers like Naughty Dog. So um, they, are, they are part of the Sony family now. So Officially. this is interesting um, because there were for a couple reasons. One, um, Housemark, yeah, they've been working with PlayStation for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, made some great games for them. It's been a, a second party studio, basically. Yes. And it's not exciting to me because we're not getting anything new. Right. You know, it's like we're basically going to expect what has happened to continue. Maybe right. they get a little more money now that they're, you know, uh, under the actual Sony umbrella there. But, right. Uh, but good news nonetheless, because mm -hmm. I think that um, ultimately, I, I guess you can, you can see it as not good news as well. But I think that, you know, from a perspective of wanting Sony to, you know, maintain and uh, have a, a solidified portfolio of developers, mm -hmm. um, it's good to lock down some talent. Mm -hmm. um else you know lest they move elsewhere 
Right. You know? Yeah, it's so. just kind of disappointing that this announcement wasn't also paired with here's new content that we're, you know, developing. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that but, would be cool for sure. But maybe that's coming. I mean, they only announced this, I think, yesterday. So yep. who knows? They might and, follow it you up. Know, return, I, I guess maybe it, it can be taken as like a, a sign of, um, you know, um, this. this what was I saying? Um, it's a sign of like confidence in the team mm. because, yeah. you know, kind of releasing their latest game, reviewing well, a lot of buzz around it. And then um, and then they announce that they're being acquired and being brought into the fold. I see it as mm -hmm. a as a vote of confidence in the in the team. So agreed. Um, if if they if they didn't, and it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe the next Housemark game will be multi-platform. Then it would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be a different story. Um, right. And the other interesting thing about this was the accidental nature in which it was some stuff around it came out. Um, so it's not officially confirmed as a recording this, to my knowledge, but um playstation japan or one of them accidentally tweeted out also welcome blue point studios yes. to the team um <laughs> which is another one that that sony should seal the deal on yes. if they you know from their perspective they should seal the deal to keep these very talented people around um that are like masters at uh, remaking and remastering video mm -hmm. games so right yeah whether announcement is coming soon the official one yeah i was gonna say whether or not that was a accidental spill the beans or whether it was a you know strong hint uh in sony's direction hopefully either way it's true i think it was i think it was an accident uh miscommunication <laughs> between uh yeah the, i'm sure they wanted to give house mark their time in the, their time in the limelight. Yeah. yeah for sure mm -hmm. the 15 minutes yeah Yep. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So that's right. the uh, the first news gaming news story I found. The second that you're neutral um, on that I'm neutral on. Okay. Uh, this one I'm excited about. Um, okay. So Konami uh, uh, announced a partnership with the Bloober team, and it's in conjunction with a possible announcement and swirling rumors um, that they are collaborating to make a uh, Silent Hill game. Okay. I am excited about this. I don't care if it's a rumor and they're doing it with Bloober. I don't care if they're doing it with somebody else and this is just like a coincidence. Whatever. Okay. Somebody make the Silent Hill game. Do it right now. I am so freaking excited. Okay. Well, <laughs> have you played a S Silent Hill before? Yes, I have played Silent Hill before. I, mean, I mean, I know you like that movie. I love the movie. the movie. Yep. I love the movie. And I, I, I do like the game. Um, I don't like it as much as I like the movie, but like, that's fine. That's okay. Somebody, mm -hmm. somebody can take this game and do it better. You know what I mean? Sure. As long as, as long as we're not basing a game on the second movie, which was just a pile of garbage. Was it Silent <laughs> Hill Revelations or something? Yeah, that was terrible. I'm sure they won't base or the John game Snow. on the films. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, no, I, I want this to happen. So okay. I was, I was very excited about like everything to do with this announcement. Okay. I'm seeing mixed, mixed, um, I know reception just yep. because, um, a lot of people aren't necessarily blown away by Bloober team's previous work. Mm -hmm. Um, Ashley played the medium, uh, all the yeah. way through and did really Actually enjoy like that. that game. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think that, you know, they seem like a talented studio. They just maybe they get a little more money. You know, Konami is kind get of a little more support and yeah, uh, um, support and time. But the yeah. really interesting thing about this, if we want to get conspiratorial for a moment, um, <laughs> is uh, Hideo Kojima. Yes. He, mm -hmm. you know, long time working with uh, Konami. Um, I want this. To, I am very intrigued uh, to watch this story come out because it's proof, if it's all false, false, how humans, I mean, not that there's uh, not evidence of this, before, but how humans can connect dots yes. to create assumptions and like, and uh, whatever, so impressively well. 
because uh, this is not the place for it. You know, there are places on YouTube that you can find that they're breaking down all the ways in which this um, new game that is, uh, I should have, I should have done my homework and looked up uh, what the game is called now. I don't even remember. Um, okay. Maybe Alan is aware of the, uh, of the game, but uh, let's see. I'm going to do a quick search on it because I, there's, it seems like this vast conspiracy that this some studio is going to make a game that a lot of people thought were was going to be Silent Hill. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting when this comes out and yep. Bloober Team partners with Konami, that seems like Silent Hill as well. So yep. this is goes against um, against what uh, this this other conspiracy theory um, abandoned. That's the name of the game. Yep, abandoned. But it's supposedly not the actual name of the game. It's the code mm -hmm. name for the game that they're giving you. And they just have a teaser out at the moment. Um, and Blue Box Game Studios is the one that is making this game. So okay. I don't know. To me, as soon as I saw this story, my thoughts just went to, okay, well, look at this. This is a blow to the conspiracy theory we've been going back and forth on. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, nobody's really been able to obviously definitively pin down who's making Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. There, It's like out there, it's happening. Who's doing yep. it? Like, who's the team? So yep. we'll see. Well, if you guys are interested in like a tame, you know, meaningless conspiracy theory yet <laughs> can be applied, you know, to to many others, uh, look up a couple videos on like the rundown of the evidence, oh, sure. which is incredible to suggest that Hideo Kojima is making Silent Hill. Yeah. Uh, and it's not this other company. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah, it's going to be fascinating. So. All right. Sorry, I kind of like der no. derailed that story and took it in another direction. No, it's good. It's it's my good news story, so I'm I'm all in okay. for it. Here is my mad story. So <laughs> Amazon Prime tweeted out and and this is like the entire basis for this, but I'm I'm mad that they would even tweet it because it would suggest that like maybe it's happening. They tweeted oh, out, yeah. "So what would boys look like as a video game. Mm. So the boys is obviously their their very popular superhero show that we've covered on the podcast. Chris and I totally are loving this show, excited for season three coming out, excited for Jensen Ackles, you know, to step into a new role on the boys. Like I'm, you know, we're all about the show. I am not all about that show being made into a video game. This to okay. me feels like how I felt like during E3 when they were announcing like Stranger Things and Guardians of the Galaxy being made as video games. And I was sure. like, stop it. This feels like a money grab. Like, you know, what What would a video game of the boys, you know, much like I thought about Stranger Things and um, Guardians of the Galaxy, what would that bring? You know what I mean? Like, what would it do? What would be different? What would be unique about it? And I just can't like think – how a video game of the boys would be cool. You know, I just, I can't, I don't know. I just, it just, it yeah. feels sad. It feels like a sad money grab and don't do it. I'm on the, I'm on the boat now of, I just think that we need to just quit with the superhero stuff for a moment. Like it's time. I, it's, it's yeah. It's time. I just, I, I, d I don't you know, think we need new stuff, but like, I really like the boys. So like, as long as it's as quality as it's been, like, keep that show up. But like, I don't need new stuff like Jupiter's Legacy on Netflix, which like totally flopped. Probably because people are tired of the whole superhero thing. Like, I don't need new stuff. Like, be done with that. I agree. But I'm cool if they want to make like another quality season of the boys. Yeah. I mean, the boys is different enough, you know, it's ultimately it's not that it's superheroes. It's that it's two the same, you know, like there yeah. are other things we can do. Um, but, yeah. you know, you talk about the video game being a money grab. Well, they're going to supposedly doing a spinoff of the boys, too. No, no. Show. 
your story Stop you it. shared said that in there gonna be a i know it's gonna be I know. A, it's just like it's i know i don't like you know, it i don't like it it's endless it, it it's is endless and um what do you feel? Am yeah, I like totally? I'm, am I totally off the rails about this, Chris? Or would you like play a boys video game? I mean, no. I I don't think I don't. <laughs> think, I don't think the boys is is culturally rooted enough. I mean, I know like it was it was foreign to me. I know that there are there are folks out there who who read the comics, but um, it was a foreign kind of concept to me coming in. And, and I just think like it's a business decision, right? They're going to keep making them until it's profitable, or until it's no longer profitable, and. And the infrastructure is already there, so it's so easy uh, to continue doing spinoffs and continue doing different uh, elements. And the actors are benefiting by by increasing their name recognition. And and so it's it's just hard for for them to kind of. I, I think I think the uh, the industry reacts slowly. It's it's they they don't make quick left or right turns. They they U turn everything because they're slowly trying to milk it for what it's worth. And so I think that um, I don't think that I mean, there's inevitably going to be one too many seasons of the boys <laughs> and, yeah. and i don't know i don't know how many one too many is i i'm excited for for the next season but i, I think they'll they'll keep making them until they just need to tell guys a slow death just like um game of thrones did and and a lot of other uh, See, but yeah. game of thrones died a quick quick awful death Painful, like, it was yeah like, yeah it like, be a slower death yeah but it's like <laughs> they decided it was over and it was just kind of yeah. like they like kind of muddled their way through it wasn't like a quick like all these cliffhangers so like we're gonna we're gonna kind of see what we can fill in here in one more sad story arc and it just never really turned out and that was just evidence that like i'm sure they still made money on on that final season yeah. it's just like yep it's oh, that yeah. they just they go until it's absolutely worth nothing see when i think of like dying a slow death i think of like true blood sure yeah, you know what yeah, i mean like that example that felt like it limped along so much Walking more. Walking Dead. Walking yeah. Dead. Yeah. Just yeah. like painful too much. Well, and I think it's a factor like all of all of those shows have in common, plus Loki, which we'll talk about later, that um, I'm not an expert in any way about the uh, about the Timekeeper uh, comic book series storyline. I had to do a little background oh. research to know what I was getting myself into. But like all of those shows and Loki have in common with their they make artistic decisions to deviate in certain places. And after four or five seasons, it compiles to a totally different narrative and they no longer have any source material to work off of, except bringing in characters that, that maybe they didn't, they cut out initially or, or storylines they want to wrap up in a, uh, in kind of a circuitous way. And so I think that uh, a lot of those series that are, that have some source material, but not enough to make, extended series they're inevitably going to kind of it's going to hit a critical mass where it's like okay well we don't really really recognize this anymore as anything mm. um that, that we that we have anything to, to base it off of so and, and that's definitely what happened to game of thrones they deviated from the beginning and slowly started to they, they couldn't figure out how to tie things together in a way that that made sense and then they just decided to quit yep and that happened to the boys too I mean, it's part of the issue, I guess, with uh, something that is funded directly from, uh, you know, Amazon or Netflix or mm -hmm. HBO or whatever, you know, and I don't know how it went down, but my understanding of something like Castlevania is mm. more like, you know, you know, I, I should, I should look it up, like how much is Netflix funding the creation of Castlevania and how did that sure. start? Or did they sure. make Castlevania, you know, pitch this idea to Netflix? Because like this is a show that yes, they're going to do another series of, mm -hmm. but they've made a complete series that wasn't drawn out or long. They finished it. It's done. Yep. And we can see examples of that. Like, and I think, you know, I don't know how the money breaks down, but they certainly earn respect and get people coming back because of that respect. It's like Breaking Bad. Well, yeah, it what it wasn't that long. It ended, and then they did Better Call Saul. In my yep. understanding, people like that as well. Yep. And you know, like it's, I don't know. I think it can it can be done right. Not everything has to be run into the ground. Yeah, yes. I, you know, it's it's poor management doing that sort of thing because it wrecks your overall brand. Yeah, um, 
even if you mm -hmm. do make a lot of money in the moment. Like, what's the what's the anticipation going to be like for this spinoff of Game of Thrones about the Targaryens? What will I I want to know what the yeah are you really excited? You know what's that's, what's it's yeah no it's so hard to say because I feel like a we've been hearing about it for so long like and we've seen nothing. So it's really hard to get hyped about it because Still it's images. like, it's Still like images. there, it's there, it's there, it's there. But like, yeah, I guess we have seen some still images, but like, other than that, we don't really know a whole lot about it. We know like some basic, you know, obviously it's going to be focused on the Targaryens. Like we know a few named characters, but like, it just feels like it's been in the works for so long. Like, I don't know. It starts to make me nervous when shows are in production that long, you know, because Game of Thrones was in that final season. They were like, we're going to delay this. We're making it for like a year and a half because we want to do it right and like want to yeah. do right by the fans. And then they came out with this like trash pile. Yeah. You know, so it it does make me nervous now when shows are in production that long. I think I think the loyal the loyalists will still watch it. I mean, I'll watch it, but like I forgot. I'll give it a, give it a shot, forgot. maybe. I forgot that was even a thing until John reminded me of it. Like I had ten minutes of ten minutes of hype when I saw Matt Smith with a uh, with a long yeah. uh, a long golden uh, um, yep. wig and, and and that was it. And and but I'll watch it like because I'm curious and I think that's how they ultimately get us. They it's not it, it is. I mean I don't blame them for it, but it's like they kind of poke and prod in different ways that they can access the market in new ways and. I just, it's hard to come up with creative ideas that are successful. And so they're the, the easy way to, to kind of continue to feed the, uh, feed the fans is to, um, to do spinoffs and, and niche, niche stories and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I just but, respect when, when, when they don't, it's kind of like when they're yeah. making the Hobbit, sure. you, you have two different routes here, you know, it's like, um, okay, we're going to make these Hobbit movies. This is how many we're going to do. It's this is the way it's going to be. Do you want to do them, Peter Jackson, or not? Because they're yeah. happening. Someone, it's going to, they're going to be yeah. made. So do you want to be behind the camera making them or not? Yeah. And so he chose, oh, okay, I'll do it. You know, they're, it's yeah. not my call to like be this many movies and whatever, you know? Right. Right. But then you have someone like Viggo Mortensen that was asked to be in The Hobbit and he said, no. Yeah. He's like, my character is not in this that doesn't make any sense i'm not coming back yeah so i like respect that immensely you know so it's fun when there's when they take um material with, with limited source material and kind of like especially really famous pieces like the hobbit and they help us kind of play out some of our curious like questions we had when reading it or watching other pieces or reading comics or whatnot and, and getting a mm. helping us see some of the, the outcomes that we wondered about so sure yep okay well we've already been talking nerdy comic book stuff yeah. or things yeah. based on comic books anyhow so we might as well jump into um the i feel like it's been it's been a light news week i'm sure there was more things yeah. there, but that's all right that's all right we're getting into getting into loki uh yeah. covering the season in halves so this is the first half Episodes one through three. Um, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have not watched Loki episodes one through three, please uh, avert your ears. Um, <laughs> and um, and then a general warning, I suppose, for Marvel Cinematic Universe in general, because right. that uh, that could happen. So. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, Loki, episode one kicks off. Chris, what'd you think? Uh, call me out. Uh, no, it was good. Uh, I felt like I was in um, a, a real life version of, of uh, 1984. It was kind of this dystopian, like overarching um, authority that you're trying to figure out a little bit about, like why the um, why they're making the decisions that they did. I was really curious as a history teacher about the. Uh, um, about the propaganda they had on the walls. I was really interested about like who the TVA was and is there any illusions that we're supposed to be drawing. And so um, I'll admit to the audience that the, um, this, this story arc is way beyond my depth when it comes to, to 
the cinematic universe. And so I had um, no idea of, of, of who the timekeepers were or, um, mm-hmm. or who the TVA was. I had no idea about, um, about the storyline. And so I was really interested in the, in the institutions and that's what really dr- yeah. grabbed my attention. Sure. Andrea. You yeah. I mean, agree? I think it's fair to say to like the average Marvel viewer and you know, they're not going to be familiar with the timekeepers either. You know what I mean? Like, um, obviously, obviously people who like are, are, you know, more in-depth fans and things like that are, are going to be aware, but like your average Marvel cinematic viewer, isn't going to be like, Oh, of course the timekeepers, the time variance authority. So like, I think it's a good way to, to introduce that topic um, and and like a fun way to talk about the multiverse and how it all works and how everything flows together and why there's like, you know, a sacred timeline, why the Avengers disrupting things in um, Endgame was potentially such a big deal because there is this, you know, one sacred timeline that that needs to be protected. So, like, it's a fun exploration of, like, all the time travel that happened in the last movie. You know, how how that can possibly affect, you know, events and things like that. So, I think this is a really fun show. I really enjoyed the first episode. It's It's very philosophical. I think every episode I've come away with, like, a deep philosophical question... And it's kind of fun to get in, you know, intellectually deep in each episode, but it's also a lot of fun. And I feel like where uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was also like philosophically deep, it wasn't as much fun as Loki is. Like Loki is just like a beat. He's charming. Like, you know, it's his character. Whereas like Falcon and Winter Soldier are both like more serious characters. So unfortunately you know, when they're exploring like deeper philosophical issues, it always feels heavier. And this kind of balances light and shadow, light Mm. and dark, heavy, light, you know, whatever kind of metaphor you want to use. It balances a lot better, I think. Yeah. When um, the philosophical nature of uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, to me, always felt a little more happenstance Mm, i don't know like this is very very uh yeah i mean Mm -hmm. they literally sit down and have discussions you know about right uh, right you know how they you know free will and stuff so um yeah i i certainly it's um it's what's drawing drew me in Uh, other than the the unique look like it looks different yeah and so far all the the Marvel television shows have looked different and I appreciate mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, this definitely feels like it's got a different, different eye behind the lens and a different aesthetic that I am cool with. Yeah. Um, I will say like, well, to, if for our audio listeners that can't <laughs> see Chris has, uh, taken off for a brief moment to, uh, Tend to the wee one. Yes. Um, tend to our bebe. But uh, he'll be back shortly and we'll have to um, catch him back up on any crazy things that we spew from our mouths. Um, <laughs> I I have to say, like, this is talking about not being aware of the, the timekeepers and, you know, how most people aren't going to be. And I'm still like, like pushing this bandwagon that. Mm. Um, it's, you're going to like these shows a lot more if you're just unaware of the source influences, because I wouldn't yeah. even know how they call it source material anymore. This there with the influences and, and I've, um, I think that, um, so for me also not being in this part of the Marvel universe from the comic books, like mm-hmm. none of that definitely none of that weighs me down um i don't have any of that those holdbacks right. or right. holdups um but it does make me wish that this show had nothing to do with the marvel cinematic universe to this point i would rather this not be loki or anything i want to see this story but completely original because i don't know what 
influence from the comics exactly, but I guarantee you they could tell this story um, completely detached from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And sure. perhaps we could be more sympathetic as well to our protagonist um, in creating someone that does not have the baggage of being a villain. Sure. Um, being so despicable for uh, his all of his ex existence. So, so that's that's kind of been my wish going through this so far. Sure. So then I I definitely want to ask you a question because I was thinking about this about who Loki is at this point in time and who the show portrays him as. So to me there's there's a little bit of a disconnect because in the first episode we obviously see and we saw this in Endgame 2 it's the Loki who has just tried to take over New York. You know, right. we're, that's where we're at in his timeline. He's just tried to take over New York, just been stopped by the Avengers for the very first time, first Avengers movie. Nothing beyond that has happened. We don't get Dark World. We don't get Ragnarok. We don't get, you know, Infinity War and Endgame. We get none of that growth that Loki has from the first time he's been defeated through, you know... The mistake of losing his mom. We don't get um, team ups with Thor and, you know, the repairing of their brother relationship. You know, we don't get Loki decides to, you know, be a hero and stand up to Thanos, even though it gets him killed. We don't get any of that. So to me, Loki is still this like, I'm going to be a supervillain. I'm going to be a king. I'm going to rule the world. But then He's ripped out of that timeline, taken to the Time Variance Authority. And for a little bit, he still acts like, you know, I'm super arrogant, Loki. I'm, you know, going to be a king. And then he's shown like two second clips of his life and what happens to him. And Owen Wilson comes back into the room and suddenly he's all like self-reflective. And he's right. like, oh, I don't want to be a villain. And, you know, I'm this way. I don't enjoy hurting people. And I was like... That is so super self-aware and mature for this Loki that right. are, is, you know, could Marvel maybe not help themselves? And they sort of had to like, be like, ah, you know, the viewers have gone on this emotional maturity journey with Loki. They want emotionally more mature Loki. We're just going to sort of have to present as if he's, you know, been through all this stuff. Right. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, it just felt a little sure. disconnecty. Where, like, yeah. I would have expected this Loki to still be, like, totally defiant and, like, screw you all. Like, I don't need to grow emotionally. And then, you know, what right. they actually showed us was a very, like, mature Loki. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. It's, it's, what are, it's to me, a question of, do people actually like watching films, especially fun mm. ones? You know, mm -hmm. something that's not like super hardcore that is about a villain. Sure. I don't I don't think people actually do. And, sure. you know, because there's all this stuff about, you know, for, for a long time, we had this big trend of making every villain. You make sure that they're very gray because it's kind of a reaction to every villain is like mustache twirly, you know, no understanding yeah. of purpose. And so, you know, we get an overcorrection where every villain you're designed to be made to sympathize with. Right. Well, Disney um, is going through that hardcore right now with like the Cruella movie that just came out, the steps, yep. the Cinderella stepsisters movie that's being penned right now um, by Kristen Wiig, you know, humanizing yep. them. Like everything right now is happening where it's like, we're humanizing villains. I, I, I don't, I don't like it. It's kind of like when Harley I Quinn, agree. Um, she is, you know, introduced in the Batman animated series, you know, mm -hmm. right hand woman of the Joker, um, crazy and sadistic. Um, and now she's on a children's show with yeah. <laughs> Poison Ivy and Supergirl and Batgirl. And they're all like, and I, I understand it's like a silly kid show. I get that. But these characters are murderous, bad people that don't yeah. give uh, don't give a damn about, you know, any sort of law or peace or whatever, you know. And right. so now we have movies starring Harley Quinn that 
make her fun and funny. And again, we're supposed to root for this person. And I, I just don't know why we have to take a people. I think people like liking a fictional bad guy mm -hmm. to a certain extent, but then we, that, that doesn't translate necessarily to yes. that bad guy being the person you want to win. You don't yes. want Heath Ledger's Joker to win, right? Right. Even though he's right. amazing and you love that character. You can. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I think it's hard because people loved Loki a lot, you know, mm. in the, in the Marvel movies. Um, so I, I get where Disney would think like, let's capitalize on that. Let's money right. grab on that. Um, but I agree with you. You can't make a show really about a villain. You need to transform him into like an anti-hero. And right. that's that's where it's like really tough for me because again, continuity wise, that doesn't work for me right now. Because yep. this Loki is pure villain Loki. If you somehow snatched, you know, Loki who was being killed by Thanos out from under him, that's an emotionally mature Loki. You know, right. I mean, he's not like the best. He's not Thor. Um, he's not, you know, total hero material, but he's grown. He's changed and he like picked a side. And for us, it was the side of good. So if you snatched that Loki away, put him in this show, I would have been like, sure. Like, yeah, he has the emotional maturity to do all of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't there something a little like just fan? I know these are fantasy land. It is, it is fantasy, fantasy land. But isn't there something a little like uh, untrue to reality where ever like what happens when every villain becomes the antihero? Like you right. say, you yeah. know, so I mean, so, even I mean, we even we go with uh, Thanos, you yeah, know, sure. designed to be sympathetic, you know, kind of thing and to understand the motivations and stuff. So mm -hmm. and you look in, in real life, um, it's not that you can't you know Ashley listens to true crime things all the time it's not that you can't understand and sympathize in some way with some mass murderer mm -hmm. but you kind of don't because you you just still understand like the the vile nature of this person you could never have a show that is your protagonist is someone that just wears people's skins on their face you know, right. And like, that's what they do. You might feel bad for them at certain points, but you're like, man, this person is sick. Right. And you, you, they repulse you. And we're just like, I don't know, we're diminishing all our villains. That's my point. Yep. And, and I, to, to yep. yours here, then I would say that, uh, well, before I like bring that up, Chris is back. Let's see what he thinks. So we've been talking <laughs> a little bit about, um, the nature of villains in pop culture. And I've talked about how I dislike the trend to turning every villain into sort of a good guy, a sympathetic good guy. It's like a, an overcorrection from the days where every villain needed to be a uh, like shallow twirling mustache kind of Bond villain to like a, a gray, Filled with depth, we must fight for this person, right? Kind yeah. of thing, but it's still the villain. And I, I think there's, there can be, there should be room for a mix or a balance or something like that. And we're just taking, taking away all our villains. Yeah. And Andrew was bringing up the point, really, just sorry, really quick. Andrew was bringing up the point that this Loki we're seeing is a Loki that has not experienced a lot of things that the other Loki has. And so he, she, it seems un, or less plausible that he would have the emotional growth and depth to uh, perform and act the way that he does uh, in this series. Yeah, it, it, it makes me ask a couple of questions. We'll, we'll stick on that thread for a second, but it makes me ask the questions. Make me think about the Avengers Loki a little bit differently. So I, it almost makes his character more sinister uh, if we are if we let ourselves believe the fact that he's capable of this like rational thought and rational planning and, and doing something for a purpose that isn't purely self-interested unless we find out in Loki that like all of his motives here are also self-interested. It kind of makes me think about his actions in the Avengers even more sinister because he isn't just uh, 
uh, drunk with power and and motivated to um, to m- diminish Thor in any way that he can, and uh, to to make these kind of uh, evil deals. Um, it's kind of fascinating that he is uh, um, now supposedly like this well-adjusted uh, person who's able to uh, drink with rat- random common people that he doesn't know instead of try to enslave them, and clearly right. feels um, clearly feels like. I, heartbroken is probably too extreme, but clearly feels the impact of of jumping from these um, uh, these disaster scenarios from one to another, as which we'll talk about a little bit later. And so, I'm not sure if that's the point uh, or if it's just bad writing. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think if we think about the um, the most recent examples of of similar threads, uh, it happened uh, in um, uh, in. I'm sorry. I'm, forgetting the title now, but the it happened with the Scarlet Witch. Uh, she was clearly someone who oh, had... the vision. Right, yes. It, it clearly um, had been someone who was most definitely, um, at best, an, a, uh, um, a conflicted hero uh, who had enslaved an entire town population, and they spent three and a half minutes on, uh, on how sinister that was and how those people were really mad, and then all of a sudden she is this distraught widow uh, again. Um, at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of the uh, the series, and and then again they um, half in the movies and and half in the miniseries as well. They spend a tremendous amount of time trying to restore the character of Bucky Barnes, and so yep. like, all of these villains who have a shred of good in them, they spend they're investing a tremendous amount of time in 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 helping us see their humanity. And I'm not sure what the what the object is if it's. Because it's interesting, which it is. Uh, because we'll watch it, which we would, which we do. Um, or if, uh, or if they're just trying to confuse us about who the heroes are and who the villains are. It's it's mm-hmm. un- uncertain um, uh, who that is. Obviously, um, they they play that story out quite a bit in the uh, in the Avengers series about how um, this kind of global authority it has a lot of negative side effects and um and 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 ostracizes a lot of people in other communities and it comes at a huge cost every time there is this conflict but yeah I, i'm i'm i was kind of interested i, I did hear you guys conversation i was uh, i was a viewer for a moment on my phone so i was i was listening to the conversation oh, okay via yeah, live stream so uh, i'm all caught up okay so, all right well yeah I'm, I'm i'm curious i i think that's a really good point that andrea made that um he was a prisoner five and a half minutes after he was his grand plot was defeated and New York was still being attacked. Um, and he has no reason he has no reason to feel happy, including the fact that he didn't get to have shawarma. So <laughs> he never got that yeah. drink either. He didn't he? Didn't <laughs> it's uh, so um, it makes me think as well. Like I think part of the conflict I always have with. Um, the Thor character and then the Loki character and having this whole element inside of uh, the Marvel cinematic universe is that they're named after gods. Uh, They take inspiration from gods. Loki calls himself a God. Mm -hmm. So, but in the comics, there's different takes for like, if at times Thor is the literal God of thunder. Right. And at times he's not. And so it adds a complication, like, because when you look at mythology, it's not a lot, at least that I've seen, that gods really change. Like, gods yeah. are generally kind of created for purpose, you know, especially yes. in, like, uh, you know, certain cultures. Like, it's it, so if you have the the god of lies, the god of tricks, um, mm-hmm. that is literally what he does. Yep, There's not a lot himself. of room for growth or you don't you are no longer that the gods yep. are the are the the constant of mm-hmm. time, you know, and um, so can he be so, so can he be can he actually be reformed by realizing that his actions are going to lead to the death, death of his mother and his own death? I think maybe that's the only thing truly that can reform a uh, a troublemaker is watching his own death happen. I think that's going to end up reforming this character more than watching his mother die, even though we've been kind of told this narrative that like, that's the only thing that makes him, mm-hmm. uh, that makes him change his ways or to trust Thor more, et cetera, is that he, um, is that he, his mother is the one that he cares about most, but I think he's, he's self-interested. So, 
anything he can do to change his timeline or to experience a, mm. um, a different outcome, even as a variant, living permanently as a variant. I mean, what's his, what's his end, what's the end game for him? I mean, variants are designed to be extinguished. So does he earn the right to continue existing on an alternate timeline? Like that seems like against the core philosophy of the TVA. So we'll see. So I want to, yeah. I want to definitely get to um, bringing up like, you know, you get to see your own death because I felt like that was a big, big moment and like worthy of like a, a, a follow up and a discussion. But I, but I do also want to say, so you know, just going on the on the thread of, you know, gods are created for a reason moment. You know, Thor as the god of thunder has a lot more room to grow as a character because like you can be the god of thunder if you're a happy god of thunder or a, you know, right. immature god of thunder or a mature god of thunder. Like whatever you want to be, you can just be the god of thunder and that's fine because thunder doesn't change. But right. Loki is the god of mischief. And right. trickery for a reason. Like, you know, you, you don't, unfortunately, if you're the god of that, it feels like you can't really evolve beyond that. You know right. what I mean? Like, because then you wouldn't be the god of that thing. That thing is like an, an, a constant. It's an unchanging thing. And it's a thing that, you know, is part of your personality. Whereas, like, thunder doesn't have an attribution, you know? So, like, you can but be... You know, like I said, I feel like you can experience emotional growth, maturity, et cetera, and still be the God of Thunder, and, like, nothing would really change. Hasn't the sh the cinematic universe now here proven, though, that they're not gods? Like, um, they I mean, that's the thing. They've like, not proven that, but they've said that they're, like, godlike. You know, when I remember right. when they were first talking in the Avengers about, like, these guys are basically gods, or, you know... Thor says, we're not gods, and, and Loki's like, but we basically are. You know, we live, like, you know, all this long time, we have all these powers, and Odin was like, you know, yeah, you're, like, sort of gods. So it's very mm -hmm. murky. Yeah. I don't know. You know that, I, that I feel like Marvel itself a... hasn't, like, quite figured out what they are either. I, you know, it, it's always a, that complicated thing with, <clears throat> um, with nerddom or any sort of thing like this is you can't have it both ways where right. you want something of depth um, that demands you then or asks of you to think about it. Mm -hmm. But then to on the other hand, be like, well, don't think about it so hard. <laughs> like, exactly. exactly. Don't consider the details so much. <laughs> like, get over it. It's a fake show. But think <laughs> very like, you know, specifically yes. about what I'm trying to tell you right now. So, yes. Um, I think they know their audience. I think that they are. Uh, I think they know that people are going to be hyper analyzing it, and I think they get a little um, sadistic joy of never giving us answers. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, yeah. I. Uh, what do you think, Chris? I was saying that. Um. You know, I think that this is the one show in particular. You know, as as Marvel, like, I think is getting more and more confidence to deviate from source material. Um, and I, but this one, I just feel like I will have loved to see this having no connection to the Marvel cinematic universe, just n the, none of the characters, nothing, just its own fantasy sci-fi thing. I think I could buy into the whole, the whole setup and the time, everything better. And it doesn't carry with it the baggage. And I know there are moments then that they get to add in this because it's connected to everything else that right. are satisfying, but for well not what would it, take, what would it take to segregate it, I guess, in your mind? Like, is it is it the not having the starting point with the Tesseract? Is it not um, not having Tom Hiddleston? Is it not like what's the what's the what's uh, how do you separate the two, I guess, in, in my mind? Well, because all this would need to be would be someone that um, maybe does something uh, catastrophic something for them very unexpected or accidental, you know, like it, it doesn't matter what it is and they get picked up by, you know, they're in the desert and they get sure. uh, accosted by these people in black suits and taken someplace. And what is this? I don't believe in this reality. It could be, and if we want to ground it, so it's like, it seems more foreign to us. 
you can make it clear that this person is was from Earth or something if you want, mm -hmm. you know, modern day Earth or whatever. But yeah, I think, um, I think yeah, that probably pick. yeah, I think that probably brings me back to what the point of all these stories are. I mean, I think it's it has to be um, they have to play out in a way that's like all these unanswered questions we have about the, the about the films. And I think like you, I, I'm not sure you can have this series without the films and have an audience of the size of the size that they, they want to be able to do the production quality that they want. I, all these small little questions that we see, like, well, what happened to Loki when he grabbed that Tesseract? Like what happens, what happens with vision? He's a machine. He th theoretically could be repaired. What happens um, uh, when Captain America decides to retire? What happens when, um, all these characters kind of have their own storylines kind of break off. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get, I think you, you project this five or six mini series down the road. And I, and I think that we're going to see a lot of small little elements of the films. I think it's the best way to kind of uh, grab on to um, grab on to uh, people who wouldn't necessarily have uh, um, have watched it, but then they've seen those small little instances in the movies and like, Oh yeah, you're right. I'm kind of wondering what, what has happened to that character? What did happen? Like, why did we not know that in the in the story? I mean, I think we're going to see that in a couple of um, a couple of different ways, and and I wouldn't be surprised if there are seven or eight more of these miniseries that that kind of play out some of those ideas. I I I don't disagree that it could be successful without it, but I think the clientele is smaller. Oh yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of my argument. I think that that is the reason they're doing this is because. Yeah that's we we are using a known property and so therefore we will have the audience and um so yeah I, I completely understand it just feels so uh easily disconnected from the rest of it to me and i know there's like uh in the third episode we get another as he slams down the glass you know we get uh, fun stuff like that yeah. yeah um but yeah okay um i liked uh let's see what else in episode one i i was very pumped they launched right into a free will discussion yeah all right let's wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean episode one i think was not afraid to tackle the heavy stuff um you know they they got the fun in there too i have to i have to plug this before i forget it because it's so awesome the db cooper lore that was so sweet. I'd never, ever known about that before, that that was like a real thing, like an unsolved mystery, plain hijacking, excellent thing that I'd never heard about before. And that was like so, so sweet. So like, I love that they can have those like super fun, you know, let's travel back to the 70s and have this like jazzy little sequence and then also balance it out with like, what is free will? You know, like, what what um you know what does it mean to you and why why does loki feel like he gets to get it but then like subjugating an entire crowd of people because you know free will is an illusion that destroys your life and choice is an illusion that destroys your life you know like how do you balance those perspectives how do you mm -hmm. balance you know i get free will but somebody else doesn't well rationalization oh. it's a powerful thing it really is apparently even for you know god or godlike Creatures. I think if we back it up, if we back it up for a second, and and Loki has this notion that he is the exception to the rule, right? Like that free will is dangerous, yeah. and uh, but I think that uh, Loki and the TVA agree with one another that free will it doesn't really exist, and I think that Loki's yeah. the only one who isn't on board <laughs> with that idea that like there is this kind of destiny for for individuals, and obviously like that gets more complicated when you talk about some of the other cinematic universe characters, but. I think in this instance, like the TVA is a natural fit for for Loki because he recognizes that all these people are just like cogs in a in a machine that's running. So, I mean, interesting. Yeah, it is a bit of a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, that's for yeah. Sure. exactly. Yeah, rule reversal. Yeah, maybe we're predicting um, the parts of the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when you guys were sitting there and listening to the free will discussion and learning more about this organization that's unknown. Like what are your, what are your thoughts on the organization? Do you believe they exist? Do you, uh, do you think that it makes or that they have the intent and abilities that are claimed? Uh, the, the mission statement is true. 
And, uh, you know, I, I know Andrew and I have talked about free will some. Yes. I haven't heard on Chris's thoughts on, on much of that. And, you know. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm not quite sure what the, like, I think we're all pretty suspicious of the TVA. Like, they're the, the, the one organization that we really don't know what their, what their motives actually are. And I, I've got notes kind of throughout, like, a couple of different layers here. But I think one element of this is the TVA is apparently some sort of secret organization uh, that enforces the concept that people don't actually have free will and they have to stay along this timeline. So, like, who are they trying to convince? They seem to have a pretty thorough propaganda network. Um, they have commercials and mascots and posters on the wall and um, this line they fed to all these groups. And I think, obviously, in episode three, we get a hint that maybe the TVA is um, a little bit more sinister than it's, than it's originally portrayed, that, that all these characters are, are variants themselves. That's what, that's what Sylvia mentions in episode three. And so I'm kind of curious what the uh, um, uh, what's the what's the educate what's the reeducation process look like for these um, for these employees? Who are they trying to convince? Um, why is it that they have such a intense propaganda network? If um, everyone who comes in in episode one, all we see is two people who come in and they're both extremely hostile, and one is executed, uh, and then Loki falls in line at least temporarily. And so, what's the if that's their, if that's the ultimatum, like why do they need to convince anyone of everything? It's like it's a simple choice. Mm -hmm. You follow our decision or you die. And so they're clearly there's an infrastructure that's critical to the organization that is meant to convince, not to punish. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious who the population is that they're that they're mm -hmm. trying to convince if they are a secret organization after all. So it has to be the people within the organization to kind of toe the company line. Yeah, I agree. Like if, if nobody comes to the TVA, you know, right. except people who either A, never leave it or B, never leave it because they're executed, then your propaganda only works internally because no external yep. people ever see it and then leave. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously like suspicious right away. And then I think we're we're pretty trained to be suspicious when, you know, you say like the timekeepers are in charge, but nobody gets to see them and nobody gets to, you right. know, know about them. And the closest thing you've seen is like cartoon versions of them in like the propaganda movie statues. or the statues. Exactly. I, I have some thoughts about that later that I, I want to bring up when we talk about episode two slash three, but like, sure. Yeah. It's very strange. Very strange. Um, and I think like the other, the other element of that is uh, the people who are working for the TVA, like the foot soldiers, seem to have a little bit more awareness of um of like the outside world and obviously they have to step into it and they don't have their memory wiped and so they're aware of all these different moments when they've had to kind of restore the timeline but the employees at the tva are like shells of people um mm -hmm. like the like the guy who didn't know what a fish was um right like, <laughs> really like how is it possible I mean, not trying to project our own understanding onto the characters, but like, how is it possible that a variant could come in and not understand basic species classifications, that type of stuff? Right. So, like, this isn't just sit you down in front of propaganda and, and keep your eyelids open and tell you, like, recognize right. that our way is the right way. Like, there's clearly some memory wiping, brainwashing going on here that's even more extensive, like forgetting your former self and recreating you. And so I'm expecting one of the next three episodes to, to kind of show us kind of that extreme sinister yep. element of the TVA, the, the, the mm -hmm. side that, that no one sees. Well, and the other thing with this uh, discussion they had um, for free will or not was that didn't seem to come up was it, we're talking about destiny. Usually it, the idea is that something is preordained therefore it's not that it's 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 not that it's being made it's that it is it is written and right. i get the the idea from the tva more that they're sending their people out to rid the world of variants and like adjust the timeline as it goes to get to a specific outcome Yep. So it's kind of this active, like, as opposed to you are born and therefore you have uh, like a pre-written 
path. They're sort of like moving the road in front of you, yes. you know, and then if you move off the road, they ax that version of you and it, you know, the other version of you proceeds as, as they'd like. So is it is right. it to me, if that's what's happening, I mean, is that enough of a distinction between like the uh, traditional understanding of destiny and, and what these guys are trying to do? Yeah, I think so. Um, because destiny, even though it's larger, it still can be individual. And, and in this version, it seems like individual destiny might be discounted in favor of, you know, like this larger universal destiny, you know, like everybody gets here, even if your destiny and we want to get here. So maybe like individually, your destiny was to go off the path. And maybe that actually is your individual destiny, but sorry, can't have it because we need universal destiny and we need like everybody to get here. So you mm -hmm. and your potential fate or destiny have to be pruned in order to follow this timeline. Um, all right. Anything else about episode one before we start talking about two? I mean, yes. So I said I wanted to come back to this. So Loki gets to, you know, be on his own in the room with a video of his timeline and his file mm -hmm. and, like, everything. And he chooses to start, like, watching ahead again because, you know, he gets a little mm -hmm. taste of it from Owen Wilson. He basically, you know, watches some greatest hits of his worst moments. You know, obviously he watches his mom dying. And then he fast forwards and watches his own death. Yeah. And my question is, like, if you could, would you like, would you want to know how it all ends? Like, yeah. obviously, if you fast forward far enough in your file, like in this theoretical thing that the TVA has, you would get to see it. So would you? Would you want to know? Definitely not. Chris? Definitely. <laughs> I think it's a reflection of how self self-interested Loki is. I mean, I think he's. He's looking for how his story ends. Like he has two things he cares about: his mother and his and himself. Um, like I think it's a reflection that he doesn't even look at like Thor's down spiral. He just looks at all the times he was admonished and how he like. But then he like shows a little clip of like how his how he like at the very end kind of resolves conflict with his brother and then he gets killed. Um, yeah. And it's just like I don't know, yeah. But to answer your philosophical question, definitely not. Like, yeah. and I think that that's a that's a broader uh, broader question about how this show is defining what destiny is. Like, I think a lot of people would define um, would define destiny as uh, you have a starting point and you have an end point, and there's lots of forks in the road, but you or variances in this context, but you ultimately branch back towards the final destiny. And as long as you keep hitting the bumpers, you kind of stay on the track. And that isn't how. Um, that isn't how the show kind of portrays destiny. This, like, you create two different selves as you branch off, and and one mm -hmm. of those selves has to be eliminated so that you stay on a very straight line. And uh, and so, like, destiny is is the butterfly effect. Like, you can't just like go off your track and eventually make your way back. You have to stay on the line the entire time. And so, they're mm -hmm. very they're very concerned about collateral damage. Um, and so, I just. Um, yeah, but definitely not. I, like, it's hard. How can you possibly be comfortable with the end when you don't know the middle? Yeah. Good question. I mean, I would, I would hope that I would say no. Um, that I wouldn't look at it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have not looked at my medical uh, tests for 23andMe. Mm. I could, I could log on sure. right now and I could look at it all, and I have not. Um, so I think that's a, a more minor version of of a similar idea potentially. Sure. But um, yeah, I I mean the one thing would be you know that curiosity, of course, like well, can I see what it is and then defy it? Yeah. You know, can I prevent like, it? Will it be or can I? Yeah, right. But then you get into what you know fun stories that are. Well, did you always see it? And therefore, right. you seeing it is what led you to the death that you saw. Exactly. So, same question yeah. from episode one of like, 
oh, well, the Avengers were meant to retravel that timeline. I'm like, okay, well, right. like, why do they get to? And, As who? Right. Right. and Loki oh, well, doesn't, yeah. 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 I, I no, don't it's, it's, piece, but like, they have to craft a story, so they have to re-explain right. it. It was, it was clever of Loki to be like, not my fault, man. Like, the Avengers did this. Like, you know, I would never have got yeah. my hands on the Tesseract if they hadn't gone back. And, you know, I didn't see yeah. that, that argument coming, but I loved it. So it's very funny. Well, and then I'm a little unclear because, like, a multiverse, you know, idea is that every decision you make creates a new universe, you know, so every right. deviation you create. So are they literally trying to keep one timeline? Because yes. that's, I mean, that seems not possible. So because it, you'd need to have individual timelines almost. Otherwise, you'd be eliminating you'd be eliminating literally uh, an infinite number of yeah. people uh, forever. Constantly. Yeah. Like you couldn't. I mean, it just like literally there's this not. So to me, to me, it poses more that large scale things break off the timeline not <laughs> you you know oh but sure because sure. because there's different universe there's different universes because we clearly have different loki's very different loki's and so they and still okay. exist and can exist right yeah so i'm a little confused in how does each of those universes have a timeline that is must be maintained consistent to meet right. whatever end goal of order Right. Um, or how it is, you know, I'm a little uncertain. So, yeah, I mean, that seems like the closest approximation. Otherwise, like you said, there'd just be like everything has the yep. potential to be trimmed and you would just run yourself silly, even with yeah. yep. even with an organization as vast as like the TVA seems to be. Right. Do they have a do they have a uh, <laughs> do they have an oh shit meter on the, uh, <laughs> the, running, uh, the running line of like what causes yeah. a. We're causing a blip on their, uh, um, is it like, yeah. oh, I got something different for lunch than I was supposed to? <laughs> or yeah. like, or is it people dying or people disappearing or people making yeah. right decisions? Like what, what distinguishes a, a variance from, from nothing at all? Like, I mean, I think obviously Loki is going to be more hypersensitive to that equation because of course he's a critical figure in the story of humanity when he co chooses to make a, a variant decision and uh uh but like for average people like the three of us like i'm sure we could go about our timeline and doing lots of different things and, and never cause any alarms you know but you never know That's, i mean i yeah. might eat something different for lunch that lunch gives me food poisoning that <laughs> food poisoning puts me on the toilet for a long time and i am like about to pass out i do pass out and knock my head on the counter unconscious whereas I would have been walking on the street and like pulled someone out of the way of a car that was uh, on their way right. to negotiate peace talks with whoever <laughs> else. <laughs> like we were, all we peace in the Middle North. East. <laughs> Back to philosophy. We've gone full circle on episode one. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I mean, the TVA itself suggests that it can be ordinary people because in that little like miss, miss, what is it? Minutes? I think she is. Oh. Is that the little clock girl? The, the clock. I'm not is sure. her name Minute? I can't remember. Yeah. She, yeah. So I think she's Miss Minutes. Um, she suggests like you're walking along in your ordinary life and suddenly, you know, you do something and it's like this random guy who's part of a crowd and suddenly he decides like he puts on a black hat and he's like, bah! like I'm evil now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, call, call a throwback yeah. to like, you know, mustachioed villains you know, he throws on a fedora and a trench yeah. coat and suddenly he's like off on his own timeline. It does seem to suggest that like ordinary people could do things that are just like crazy bad for this master timeline here. Right. So not, not, to, not to bring it back again, like eventually we need to move on, but like that's just a piece yeah. of propaganda from the TVA. Right? True, true. Yeah, no, you know, obviously it could be, you know, total crap and just like a scare tactic. It but makes the, it makes if the critical we, actor we, in history to not feel targeted when they're scooped up by the TVA. Yeah. Maybe they're really only culling the uh, the folks who are causing widespread true. damage. True, true.
yeah, I mean, it's hard to know. I mean, propaganda that, makes it seem realistic, but, you know, it's also propaganda. All of that schmuck they zapped seemed pretty ordinary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They didn't seem too broken up about just zapping him. Like, no. man. No. no. He was an act. He was, he was a TVA guy. He was a plant. He was a plant. He was a plant. Uh, he was a plant. <laughs> yeah, just scare mm -hmm. the heck out of Loki. All right, so we're introduced to the organization. Loki is kidnapped. We get to episode two. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what do we think of episode two? We're we're we've got uh, Owen Wilson, kind of um, his character, uh, Mobius. I love the yes. name. Yes. Um, trying to take, kind of give Loki a second chance, uh, mm -hmm. and a third chance, and a fourth chance, and whatever. Um, <laughs> What do you think of like what we learn and uh, how we uh, this mission we open up on and stuff like that? So I, I had a question for for everyone, and I I caught it only because I made Andrea pause it um, when we were watching it together, and I I didn't oh, put yeah. this in our, in our show notes, but um, the uh, I had a question about all the other variants that Loki had uh, created. So they were like running through. I can't remember what what part in episode two this was, but they were running through all the different storylines uh, when they defined Loki as a variant, and there was like five or six different forms he had taken. And so I was curious, like, what happened to all of those Lokis? Were they all summarily like eliminated? Where are they still running around? Why is Sylvie the only one they haven't caught? Uh, I'm kind of curious, like, what moments. Um, uh, did he did he create variants in and and obviously the god of mischief is more likely to to do that but like there was a couple of like cartoon drawings of some of the different variants that looked like they're coming from a case file and I, what happened to those guys? Yeah. No. Yeah, hard hard to say. Obviously, we don't exactly know. Um, I thought it was a nice nod to like the mythology of Loki as a figure because he just has so many different stories about him in mythology, different versions of him that, you know, are male, are female, um, you know, are monstrous and hideous, are smooth talking and handsome. And like, I just thought it was kind of like a fun variation on like the many different Loki stories. And like, he's such a different being. And, and at times he appears very physically different depending on which story of Loki you're talking about. So... I don't know. I thought it was kind of like a fun nod, possibly well, significant, but also possibly just for fun. It again brings up that confusion of like, what is this Loki we're seeing? Because is yeah. he a character? Is he an alien? He's a he's a person from another planet. They happen to be stronger than Earthlings and right. therefore seen as godlike to many other species Cultures, of yeah. lesser abilities. Mm -hmm. Or is he a, or is he a god and the god of tricks? Because, you know, the the variants they show there. I mean, obviously, so many cultures have a trickster god. Yeah. Um, they're not Loki, but then, so are we making the argument that those other cultures, trickster god, all are Loki, but mm. to a different understanding of a different culture? Or, you know, in uh, in Africa, there is a trickster god. I don't remember his name, but often takes the shape of a spider. Very, very different than Loki. Oh, you know, you see him as like a Nazi, kid and stuff. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so it's like, are we considering that Loki? You know, um, right? Because I would, I would consider that you know it's inherent in cultures to, or you know, to f you see similarity in gods because we are surrounded by the same life and the same sure. people and emotions and situations. And so therefore we have to have gods for these same, you know, it's natural. We'd have gods for these same specific things. Sure. Um, so my take of the, the different Lokis we saw was, okay, we have different universes and in those different universes, they, those universes may be very different than our own. So, like, we have uh, an analogy, an analogous form there. But sure. if the main species on a planet is not human and it's something else, 
that form of Loki takes a very different shape. But that Loki is still tied to like Norse mythology, whereas the the god, uh, the trickster god Anansi uh, from Africa would also have a drastically different form. Sure. Oh, it's a lot of just like garbage. I just spit there. So uh, whatever you want to pick up or. <laughs> no, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, it's maybe perfectly plausible. Variants. Sorry, what did you say, Chris? And maybe they're his variants. Well, they are his variants. No, well, I just mean like, in different cultures, like along the timeline, you know what I mean? Like maybe they were appeared and they were eliminated. Yeah. And he's kind of the same yeah, that's, I mean, the big question is, like, are these just, like, examples of other Lokis or are they example of, of other Lokis that have been eliminated? Sure. Right. But I would assume that if these are examples of other Lokis eliminated, they also still have, ver like, versions very, of themselves. identical versions of themselves yeah. that are continuing on a path that have not right. yet deviated. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Really puts in perspective the whole, like, infinite, you know, possibilities. Right. Um, I noticed, and I hope Alan did, that it looked like there was a ducky keyboard in use uh, <laughs> um, in one of the uh, uh, cubicles or whatever. So, uh, Alan, if you noticed that, it certainly looked like one. So I know Alan's a fan. Um, Andrea, I see you were excited. That was Wisconsin Ren Fest. Yes. Yes, I loved it. I love the whole opening of the second episode. Like soundtrack, we're at a Ren Fest. The woman who was like, "Some people need this," like <laughs> loved loved yeah. all of it. Where she was just so pissed off that they were like charging in there, like all yeah. you know, not in costume, not and, in theme. Yeah, oh, loved it. Loved people, it. it some so, people really need this. Yeah, just <laughs> so much fun. Just fantastic. So yeah, absolutely great. I was waiting for uh, Peter Capaldi to show up in the Pompeii moment. Yes. Like, there he so is great. in the corner. Yeah. Yes. What um, so great. So that's our big thing in this. So we kind of start to get that Loki is seemingly helping, at least for now, uh, um, uh, Mobius and mm -hmm. sort of figures out, hey, maybe my variant is hiding out in these... Uh, extinction events yeah. along, uh, and uh, in, along the timeline and that uh why would the tva care when everybody's going to be wiped out there anyways what can yeah. you do or plan or whatever so what do yeah. you think of this uh like kind of discovery and set up an idea it was absolutely brilliant i mean he's got such a point like who who would obviously care about what happens and you could do whatever you want in the last few moments before an apocalypse if the apocalypse is just going to happen, you know, if the end result is everything gets destroyed, like who cares if you rob a bank before it gets destroyed? Like, it doesn't matter. You and the bank are destroyed. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, I think um, it, go ahead. I, it's, it's kind of similar to um, I made me think about what other scenarios would they not care about people appearing like variants appearing to just be a an observer of events and uh variants appearing to like pose as other people and maybe not affect um uh, affect the end uh end result of a situation it was kind of interesting that it was like what what are some of the other answers because i obviously like it they're short episodes but he got to that quick <laughs> and that was that yeah. was interesting that he got to that that answer pretty quickly uh, it made me think about um so obviously we had Pompeii and we had the um uh we had the um modern uh I can't remember the time the Oklahoma. 20 2051 um where with the oh. in Alabama in Alabama. Uh but yeah, I was wondering about the the other dates. Like was it just for fun that they were picking these dates like the Andrew Dart mentioned the DB Cooper um one if that was just for 1970s, fun. 1970s, yeah. Yep, and then they had the 1840s in Oklahoma. Uh, they had 1985 in Wisconsin. They had the 1540s in France. Like, is there something to those dates? Like, why was the variant there? There had, like, it wasn't, 
Like, why would he go to those places in those times uh, to lure TVA people there to steal their um, mm. time resetting things? Like, why were like, why would those moments draw attention? Like, are they totally random or are they really like, is there something behind the dates that that Sylvie sure. was using? And I was maybe kind of I was taking notes about that when I watched like. I don't understand what those dates all have in common. So sure. Yeah, they could be Easter egg things for sure. I, that might be that might be something interesting. Um, three of them are uh, three of them are in the United States. Like, why is that? Um, mm -hmm. Why is that the case? So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I wonder I wonder if we'll get any sort of answer on that or if, or if it is an Easter egg or if it literally is like, well, we need to kind of just diversify like, right. to, you know, um, yeah. Well, that's what, that's what makes know. you question it. Like if, if diversifying was the answer, they would have picked like and then the last one is is in Alabama, obviously. But like, why would they pick three out of four in the United States outside of the fact that like that's where the Marvel Cinematic Universe occurred for the most part. So. Kind of interesting yeah. they, they pick that like you yeah. that I, I don't know if it's lazy or if it's if there's more to it viewership for relatability you Maybe. know like understanding that yeah uh, your where your audience is from and like tying it to home a little bit that way yeah you think they would have maybe like if they were trying to you know, do a little like eh to the movies or whatever. Like they would have done the United States, obviously, but they would have done like New York or like Sokovia. If they were going to branch out of the United States, you know, just to yeah. be like, ah, it's, you know, on the Avengers timeline and stuff like that. You know, we know these things. Yeah, my immediate it's interesting. Thought, it's interesting what they picked. Yeah, my immediate thought was, oh, like they're they're trying to pick places like like Sylvia's trying to pick places where like something big is about to happen. And like that's going to be a situation where they might cause a variance an additional like disruption in time. And so they're going to like rush to these moments, but like those moments, as far as I'm aware, are not critical in any particular, for any particular reason. So. Cause they were cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah we don't know about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was going on in the 1540s France. I'm a world history teacher, but I, I, I can't think of anything really critical in those, in that, in that time period or in 1840s, Oklahoma, et cetera. So. Yeah. But it lends to the the idea that, you know, anyone can be a variant, anything can step off of the course and it can yeah. be a small, a small, seemingly small thing. Yeah. And they're apparently able to track those variants pretty effectively. It's not just like when they cause a disruption because they were able to find them quickly. So. Yep. Yep. Um. Andrea, I like your note here. Existence mm -hmm. is chaos, and we try to make sense of it. Yeah. Um, that was, uh, yeah, yeah a little deep thinking with Owen Wilson there, you know? Just like that that kind of like was boiling down, you know, the point of the TVA. Existence is chaos, and we make sense of it, and that's our purpose. But then it was just sort of very, like, philosophical. It's like, it's broadly applicable. It's, you know why we have origin stories and why we have, you know, science and religion and, you know, all the, these big other things that try to explain the nature of existence because, you know, it's chaotic and crazy. And if we didn't have something to try and like force it into, you know, logical and linear progression, we would just be so lost. Sure. So. Yeah. Just, yeah, I, just, uh, interesting to me. You know, he's getting, uh, you know, deep about it, but then goes on to say, well, you know, you think about it too hard, you know, like you just stop. You just, you know, you can't yep. think about it too hard, you know, kind of thing. Exactly. And uh, and then his explanation of like where they're getting to is, well, then there will be order. Yes. And it's sort of like these these to me are like red flag kind of things like yeah it's um, such a okay, fantasy well, stop thinking about it so much and don't worry in the end there's order yeah like this so oh, whole order? we're gonna well and we're gonna meet in peace at the end is just like mm -hmm. how is this not like some sort of like fairy tale line you're being fed here mm -hmm. you know but like it all just magically the... works yep but if you see the mind the mind whatever mind wiping kind of thing re-education they have and then 
again, when, like you say, when someone doesn't know what a fish is and like their entire exposure is everything there, that is totally the reality. And like, right. of course, you know, you're not going to, it's almost like, I, it's almost like a slap in the face. And I just thinking of it like where you're a variant. So you did something you weren't supposed to. So you get brought to the TVA mind wiped. And now everything you do is exactly what you're supposed to. And you don't like step outside that box. It's almost like I could see it almost as like a, a pride thing that we've taken these deviants and wrangled them. And they are now our bots, like our, yes. you know, are under our complete control. And uh, they think what we want them to think kind of thing. Well, it's, it's very, I, I, um, yeah, it's, it's, I wrote about this a little bit, like from the third episode when we do, you know, we learn about Sylvie's proposal that, you know, all of the TVA agents are variants and we're, and we're taking her at face value. And, right. and I think it makes a lot of sense. So I'm taking it, you know, as it is right now and running with it. Um, but it's like if you took a group of prisoners and turned them into the guards at a jail, you know, right. now they're the jailers yep. of over their fellow prisoners and they act exactly like, you know, guards would. You know what I mean? Like it's this total like transference. You think they'd be like sympathetic. You think they'd be like, you know, I was just there and I, I understand what it's like on the inside, but they don't. They completely transform. And a lot of like famous like sociology experiments have done things like this, like, you know, taking I'm about, I'm about Stanford. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. And these people just like completely flip. They just like it's like they don't even, you know, and these are people whose memories aren't even wiped. And they just don't, mm. they almost like completely divorce themselves from their previous life as like a, as a prisoner. And they're just solely like a jailer now. Uh, um, what's the, what's the, the study you're referring to? So the Stanford, Stanford prison Stanford. experiment, I think it was in the sixties or seventies. And they did literally did that. They took college students and they made half of them the guards and half of them the students. And there's been a lot of more modern analysis of, of the event that like, it wasn't as necessarily intense as it was documented and it was kind of like set up to, to happen this way. But like in psych textbooks, you're, you'll read about how the guards like got drunk with power and they abused their, um, uh, abused their fellow students and they like the role playing got taken to an extreme and caused sure. psychological dam damage in, in the, uh, for the lives of the, um, of the students but yeah it's a classic experiment about like when you give when you grow mm -hmm. play you give one people power over another yep right well that would be interesting to look at um mm -hmm. yeah that's uh i hadn't thought of it that way that's cool um we should talk we you mentioned her now a couple times yes uh sylvie so we saw her in episode two, realizing we have a, a variant, uh, another universe version of Loki um, that's been plotting everything. And I want to know, like, she jumps through the door that she creates. You're Loki staying there. Yeah. Owen Wilson's running towards you. What what do you do? Because I did feel for him in that moment. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what you do, should do, man. I don't know. I'd have chased her. I'd have chased her too. Yeah, I he probably would have gone. He's the only one that's capable. The door. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what, 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 what can you possibly? You can't. We don't think, anyways, that that they can tell where they're going. So, mm -hmm. the fact that it was back to the TVA was um, kind of an ironic twist, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, yep. you don't you don't know that at the time. Like, she could be going anywhere, and she's clearly not coming back to 2050 Alabama. Yeah. Now that she knows that, you know, that was like her base. Right. So, yeah. you know, how would you find her again? Because she doesn't leave the convenient, you know, kablooey gum clue again. Yeah. And it was her base for a goal that she achieved. So. No, yep. not exactly. Well, she set off the bomb and it started creating all of these. Different. She didn't get uh, to finish the job. Yeah. Exactly. Which was very frustrating to me because that is where Loki is, you know, we do see his lack of growth like shine through again is just so self-absorbed like 
just follow her. Just like, mm -hmm. you know, so what what are you going to, you know, see what she's going to do? Like, if, if your goal is to take over the whole thing, um, what good is it going to be for you to try to stop her from, I don't know, killing the these uh, Time Lords, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was frustrated with that moment, but I guess it rings true for the character, like the arrogance, like he's going in there like, you know, I'm the only one automatically calling the inferior version and I, they're back and forth about the whole like, uh, you know, they can't they're not going to work with one another. So, I, yeah, I had, I had an interesting question, too, about about that moment. I think when we. This is, this is a little bit at that moment, but it's also a little bit at the um, throughout uh, episode three as well, like the there isn't that much in common with. Um, with Sylvie and Loki. And so like, I want to know what decision was made on Loki's timeline that created her because it's got to be a ways back. Like she doesn't even have a memory of, of Loki's mother. Um, and so I'm curious, like what, at what age was Sylvie created as a variant, which is kind of interesting. Well, so unless I'm misunderstanding how this would work, that's not the way this would work. Like you're not, you're not, you still have your full memory of your past. Right. Like, like if, if, even if you're a variant and you deviate, you still lived your full life to that point right. and are continuing on now. And so whatever her point that she deviated and became a variant, she would still remember her past. Yeah. But she said, the she said she branched. Yeah, she just said that she had only like glimpse, uh, glimpses of her, of her, of her mother. Like, is her mother that she's referring to also Loki's mother? I see. Well, and uh, and so his wait. birth mother or Frigga, his adoptive right. mother. Right, right. So that was my understanding was that she, whatever her upbringing ended up being, she was never, she never had the. Um, as guardian mother, the adopted sure. mother, right. like uh, like Loki. So at a very very young age, whatever fragments of a memory she has left um, of her birth mother. So yeah. like they're kind of wanting to trade stories because Loki not knowing our Loki not knowing his birth mother, but knowing his adoptive one, and yeah. the other way around on uh, on our on our variant here our, on Sil uh, Sylvie. Loki is Alphison, like by birth, and so he's, uh, but he's, um, he's an Asgardian from infancy, like he's picked up. So, like something yeah. along the timeline, pretty dramatic change. Like maybe, um, uh, maybe Odin never picks him up, uh, or maybe the the battle against the Frost Giants goes differently. Like, yeah, what's the like the fact that she that she's a girl is also a, a complicated well, piece. Well. I mean, for me, two things there. One, that she's a girl isn't that complicated, actually, because in Norse mythology, Loki is a shapeshifter and appears at various yeah. times as a man, as a woman, as an animal, you know, as a rock. Like, you know, he just like... actually know what his true form is. So even true. though we think of Tom Hilson yeah. as his... As his Loki. Shape. Doesn't have to be. <laughs> um, well, I so mean... So that's, so, yeah, sorry. I'm just going to say that one thing really quickly. Like, so he's a shapeshifter. So like the fact that he's a woman doesn't really bother me because like in Norse mythology, he's a woman sometimes in the stories. Yeah. Second thing is um, Sylvie also says she, she's like, uh, Tom Hiddleston's Loki tells her, spoiler alert, if you didn't know, we're adopted. And she says, I already knew that. They told me. Mm. So mm -hmm. she already like, isn't obviously being raised by frost giant parents because she is like adopted, but is she adopted by Odin and Frigga and, or is that her variation that they tell her right away, you know, like in her, you know, whatever mm -hmm. variation of whatever timeline she's living, you know, she clearly right. knows. So what does that mean? Who are her adoptive parents? Yep. Question, I, question, to me, question. the, what's that? Questions, questions, questions. Yeah. <laughs> to me, the the shapeshifter thing really doesn't play uh, an element in this because we're seeing different universe versions of each of each character, and I think that gets like so you know driven home by our hologram 
images of other Lokis that are incredibly different. Now, yeah, presumably that's, that's all I'm saying is like could shape shift into another Loki, but they yeah. all have their inherent natural form and, and coming along with, you know, the ability to shape shift always leads to that, that, uh, you know, it, it's a convenient way in history to be like, oh, yes, I was being watched over by said mm -hmm. God because I saw this animal and right. my neighbor said he saw the animal too. And that also co coincided with good luck. So therefore, it must have been right. this god of good luck, you know? Yeah, all I'm saying is for me, like, seeing all these different versions of Loki, like, like doesn't disrupt any sort of continuity in my brain the way it would if it was like, let's see 20 different versions of Tony Stark or 20 different versions of Captain America or 20 different versions of, you know, Thor even. Mm. Uh, because Loki, you know, historically in mythology has appeared as like 60 different, you know, things. So in my brain, it's like, of course, you know, like we have, you know, hulking giant Loki and we have woman Loki and we have, you know, the Loki that looks half like a wolf. That's all fine because in Norse mythology, he's appeared as all of those things. Hmm. Um, let's see what else goes down in episode three. Um, we have obviously the two trying to. Getting know get to know each other a little bit, deciding to scheme together mm -hmm. for a while. Um, what do you all think of this episode? Yeah, I mean, it's a, obviously a good way to have them work together for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, being stranded and having like a mutual goal of like, okay, well, we don't want to die is always a great way to yep. forge, you know, unlikely partnerships. I thought this episode was a little um, got a little too silly, considering sure. the the tone of the first two, where you know Loki is seeing his own death. We are talking destiny uh, versus uh, free will, and in this one, so, he didn't like the love is a dagger metaphor. Well, you know, I kind of like right that with actually. It. <laughs> yeah, and there was like fun moments like him singing and stuff. But at the same time, it, it's a little bit like, well, you are. So you thought you were going to die. You had been like, OK, I'm hopeless now. Like, I'm going to die. Now you get a chance that maybe you're not. Now you're stuck on a planet where you're going to die. Um, and it's so flippant, yes, you know, yeah, oh, I'm sure. going to, you know, I'm going to party. Oh, I'm I oops, I broke the thing. And the situation is dire, yet the attitude is uh, like so light yet. And I, don't I think know. it's trying to bring in too much comedy for it. I don't know what to believe. I mean, those aren't mistakes that Loki makes <laughs> under normal circumstances, you know? Like, he, his pride gets in the way and his like machismo gets in the way. But like, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's any evidence for this, but I have a hard time believing that like he would just screw around and accidentally change outfits and uh, smash the technology that Sylvie was trying to get back from him just for the sake of, oops, I'm the god of mischief and I got drunk. Like, I don't know. That feels, that, that's either sloppy or there's something more to it. I, I don't know. I, I kind of wonder what his, what his plan is. Like now, what's his plan? Like they're clearly going to escape somehow. In, season, in episode four. Like, I don't know how. I don't know how it's going to work. But, like, they're going to find a way, whether Mobius finds them or 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 something like that. I mean, but it's there's got to be a way. I would like to think there's a, a plan. Um, yeah. I will be surprised that there if there is, though. Like, I feel like he... It, it, that plan would have been hatched at this point, unless we're in, like, a completely... Unless they pull a thing and, like, this whole place doesn't exist mm -hmm. uh, Aha, i've got you like the whole thing's an illusion which yeah, maybe. i mean would be would be extreme uh um, capable of that even not that i'm aware of yeah. you know so to me it's i yeah i don't know it just feels a little out of character a little uh not in tune with the situation and like you say you know like you know would his pride let him make such follies um yeah. 
especially when his life is in the line and he knows it. Like, if he thinks there's any chance yeah. that he can change destiny and this isn't just some sort of, like, make the best of, of the time I have kind of scenario. Because right. so. he's all about self-preservation. Yeah. Right. So. It's hard because we've, so we've seen not this Loki now because he's mm -hmm. being ripped out at the Avengers moment. We've seen, like, Dark World Loki pull off impressive illusions before. Sure. I mean, he had Thor very convinced that he died, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. So it wouldn't be beyond that Loki to project something on scale, especially if he gets Sylvie to tell him how she does her, like, transference, like, you know, mind control, right. wh whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah, you know? and I think, I, think I, I, wrote, I, I had that question kind of written down as well, like, um, so Loki has recognized and is clearly curious about the different ways that Sylvie uses uh, the same Her logic powers. that I have access to. Yeah. Um, and he even takes that moment in the TVA to, yeah, uh, to explain um, uh, the difference between, I can't remember the two terms that they used, like projection versus yeah. some other, yeah. And he, he explains about how his, his power is one and not the other. And so my yeah. question is like, does Loki actually have access to powers that we have never really considered possible? Like, for example, in uh, in WandaVision, we had no idea that um, the Scarlet Witch was capable of such a significant um, amount of um, amount of power. And so, is does Loki also have access to powers that we never got a chance to see in the cinematic universe? Um, uh, can he learn how Sylvie does what she does? And he or does he already know? And he's um, choosing to, and he's, he's able to use it in that way. Um, does he need to be taught? Are there other ways from other variants of how they use their magic? And is he going to be able to, to utilize those in a way? It's kind of interesting to, or to think about, like, what, yeah. what tools does Loki actually have? Yeah. Right. Like, is it possible that, that, uh, that the... Um, the device that was broken it was, it was an illusion the entire time. It was totally fake. Like, I think there's a pretty good chance that that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so. it could be the, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard I, to I take mean, anything with Loki at face value. Yeah. yeah. I hope they don't let us down on that front because yeah. that will be fun if there is a sufficient amount of gotcha. Um, because, yeah, it can, be, it can be everywhere and it can be more convincing than the, like, Mission Impossible mask. You know, yeah, right. It's right. kind of a one trick show, you know, so right. exactly. he's very curious about mind control. Like the moment that he is captured, he has just utilized Selvig for an entire half of a movie by by doing True. mind control. Now, that was based on one of the Infinity Stones, not his own magic. But like he's clearly aware of the power of mind control. And I would imagine he's extremely curious to learn quickly or pick up how to do that with his yeah. own power, how that he knows it's possible. Right. Yep. Yep. I did, I did uh, love the, the whole running gag of like infinity stones or paperweights yeah. and like, yeah. just like whatever got an infinity stone. Like it's pretty, dangerous. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty great. I have like 40 copies of the same thing. I mean, I, if I were, you know, Loki, or I guess anybody who's ever, you know, even heard of an infinity stone or coming into contact with one, seeing that and the casual regard that they have for those would absolutely have me questioning, like, holy crap, how powerful is the TVA? Yeah. I mean, that's insane, right? Yeah, like, no think about how, <laughs> well, we, we think about how hard the Avengers fought for how many movies to prevent Thanos from getting all of the infinity stones and the TVA is just like scattering them around. Like, you know, if they're real marbles and yeah, yeah. true. I mean, another, again, could illusion. be another, yep. Could be another propaganda thing, you know, like, Oh, look at these infinity stones. Look how powerful we are. Like totally could be. But if you're taking it at face value. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder Loki's intimidated. Yep. No, absolutely. No. And that's, that's why it's, it's a little like, um, you know, a little incredible that we've had one variant that's been able to. That's been one question yeah, I've allude. had. Like, when did Sylvie become aware of t TVA and how did that go? Because yes. clearly she was not captured mm -hmm. by right. them. 
um, because they didn't know which one of her, you know, which version it was. Um, so, which, I don't know, it's very strange for some uh, all-aware uh, organization um, that she's able to to pull this off. Um, right. I just, I want to know how she came to to know about this and discover so much. Right. And, you know? and I'm also curious if we're going to see other um, other parties involved. I, I was wondering about this early in episode one, and I know that maybe, like, it's not going to branch out this far, but, like, there was a whole, there was a whole uh, story arc about parties within the universe that are uh, invested in maintaining timelines. Um, and so are we going to see any, like, is there any connection here between uh, the same power that's kind of rooted at the, um, in the time stone and, and the masters of, of the mythic arts? Like, are we going to see any connection to like how they're also invested in the, in, in retaining the timeline? Um, Mm. yeah like are there other organizations that are aware of the tva and that work in concert with them in some way right you know like is it going to be a thing like oh yep shield you know sure. yeah. knows. Still you know in season, in, in, yeah. in, in, in season four yeah mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know i don't know we, we've been this whole episode. We basically have just been asking questions. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's kind of the fun of this show, though. The that show is just me, I mean, yeah. all about questions. That makes me have high hopes for for episode four through six or four through six, because they're going to it's going to be high action. Like we're going to answer a lot of these questions. And I think your next episode is going to have a lot of the same uh, the same dynamic. But like, well, here's all the questions we asked and yeah, we, I, we play. I think yeah. about, you know, when we watched WandaVision and there were so many questions, so many questions, so many questions. And we were like, how are the last two episodes ever going to answer them? And then like, wham, they yeah. did it. And they it, did it well. Do you think it's going to be a big reveal, like a big truth that we didn't see coming? Or do you think it's going to be a series of events that kind of uh, help us understand bits and pieces? Like for us, it was like, oh, the Scarlet Witch is someone who is far superior to other beings than we realize and she has a history yeah. and uh mm -hmm. and she wasn't aware of that history until she kind of takes on this transformation or are we going to see that this is a, a slow erosion of the tva and and the story and the the, the power behind it that i don't know um, i mean i i almost want to be like we're gonna have a um what man behind the curtain kind of wizard sure. of oz moment you know oh it's uh it's not what it's trumped up to be it's not this great all-powerful things or right. whatever it's a lot more show than what you're led to believe but you know, yeah. we've got to sell this imagery to maintain the control sure. yeah i mean i don't know i feel oh, like yeah. mobius's boss is somehow like there's more something aware. there yeah, like, like why won't you let me see? He's like, he, like oh, most and clearly right. is like, let me. Can I talk to him? You know, kind of thing. She's yeah. very like puppet master. Ren yeah, Renslayer seems fishy to me. There, either she yeah. is. I mean, is she a variant? Like, is the judge a variant? Is or is she? Well, maybe. Like, or is she a timekeeper like in disguise? Or is she? Okay. Yeah. Um, like, because if she's been brainwashed and then was revealed all this knowledge, or maybe it's BS, like maybe no one has ever met a timekeeper. Um, yeah, right. and, and, and they're just kind of slow fed this truth until they believe it or this story until they believe it. I do have to say, if, if, if this is like we're taking at face value and all these people are variants, I want to see Mobius's backstory. I really hope they do like a little detour blip, whatever it is. If it's significant somehow to like the TVA and the creation of the TVA, even if it's just like a random offshoot, I want to see it. Hmm. I want to know. Because I think he, it'd be he fun. Made, he made Shanghai Noon and <laughs> critics didn't like it. He was a variant from that moment. And uh, <laughs> I was just about to say that he didn't crash the wedding. I was just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He didn't crash the wedding. He was yeah. so early. Oh. Uh, he didn't, he didn't adopt that dog. He's he's actually the best <laughs> male model, and he defeated Zoolander. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, yep. It wasn't it's, supposed to happen. Yep. It can't happen. happen. Never mind, he did. Yeah. The, world, the world never saw Blue Steel. Um, yep. 
Yep. Yeah, whatever it is, I want to see it. I think it'd be cool. I enjoy him, and he plays his part well. Yes, yep. he does. He's the exact same character he is in a lot of different ways, and it's still good. Yeah. So. I, I, yeah, I've enjoyed the performances. I have to say that this show of all the Marvel television shows thus far, like mm-hmm. on Disney Plus, has definitely grabbed me uh, first and uh, hardest. So I'm most interested by this one. So what, what's um, your prediction for what's upcoming? What do you think yeah, going to happen? Man, I, I mean, <laughs> right now we see no way that they can get off the planet. I mean, I can... Uh, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, I created an illusion that I destroyed the device. I, you know, you know, something. I don't know. I'm, I'm wait. Now that we've talked, I'm waiting for more bigger tricks. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I really don't have any good predictions. Um, I, I, I you know. rewatched the trailer right before I came on, and there's one thing I didn't understand yet, and I think they're trying not to give too much away. But there is a clip of uh, of Loki saying in front of people and I didn't recognize them right as it kind of buzzed by, but he's wearing a Loki campaign button. Mm. Oh um, yeah. I remember. Right yeah. Does he have the, the horns on too and stuff? Yeah. And he's got like a three piece suit maybe. I didn't notice the horns, but maybe that was the case. Cause my eyes got tracked on the button cause it's a politics thing. So like, sure. that's where my mind mm-hmm. went. And I was curious, like what's the context there? So obviously yeah. they get off of, um, off of the planet that's being destroyed, but what's the, um, what's the outcome? Like, is yeah. Loki going to have a story arc where he gets drunk with power that he is able he's able to obtain by manipulating the timeline, and um, and is he going to have another reform, or is he going to get just worse? Or kind of interesting. Or is it just a Loki from a different universe, no. different time? Right. Is this like a side story, like the whole DB Cooper was it obviously just like a fun little like let's just make this jazzy little segment, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I wish I had some solid predictions for you. I really don't. And I guess that's part of what's keeping me uh, pretty, pretty excited for it. So I feel like if we read all of the comic books, we would probably have a a deeper understanding of some of the options that we see in front of us. But um, I think it's more fun this way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll never know. Unless you go back and we go back and read them now, but we need, uh, our, we, need our, we need our viewers to help us out with some of the options. Give us a multiple choice quiz. I feel like more of the connections are probably surface, probably. you know, references so, and hints yes. rather than Wink and nod. Yeah, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. All right. If unless there's any other final thoughts, that's been Loki episode one through three our thoughts um our uninformed non-comic book uh having read loki comic books thoughts so take that for what you will well alan is trying to uh to get us up to speed and sharing some of the uh the comic book lore he just shared that uh the vote loki uh campaign button is part of a like comic series where Loki runs for president of the United States. So, yeah, it, well, it's pretty recent. I, yeah. Right. And so that's the thing. I, oh yeah. I remember this art now. Um, it, it's so much of the comic book world now is structured around trying to write something to be put into a show. Yeah. And, and it's structured around, Oh, well we know these characters from the movies. So now I'm writing that version of the character for our right. books. Sure. So or at least giving a, it's a an interesting it. what's that? Yeah, or at least giving a nod to it so that the, the folks yeah. who are reading the comics know that like we're aware we, we're not gonna go that way, but we we're, we're aware that these things are out there for us as yep. material. That was that was the only other thing that I had in my notes that when I was trying to do just a little bit of background research so to kind of know who the TVA was. I went down a rabbit hole on on Google when I saw the Franklin Roosevelt, Franklin D. Roosevelt pen that they took a moment to like focus on when Moby assigned his name on the bottom of the yeah. contract. I was wondering what that was about because that kind of got my mind going and made me think about like who the TVA is and what it's representative of. And, um, but it didn't, didn't really go anywhere, but I, I bumped into the idea that um, in the comic books, apparently there's another alternate 
alternate timeline. So there are pe- there are there's a being that created the timekeepers, and they also created another set of beings called the time twisters, uh, and they were the original ones who were supposed to kind of keep the timeline uh, uh, progressing, and they uh, instead chose to try to go back to the beginning of time and figure out um, something. Um, and so, like, there is this there's this restoration to the what the TVA in this show currently governs under the uh, under the um, supervision of the timekeepers. And I thought that was interesting because the little device that Mobius is using to like rewind uh, mm-hmm. to rewind Loki, he called the time twister. And that, that was kind of another little Easter egg oh. for the comic book. Yep. Um, That's cool. They're, they're going back in time. And I think that was kind of a, again, I don't, I, I don't know a great deal about that storyline, but it was interesting to, to know yep. that they were. They, maybe they're not going to go that direction by because they already used the 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 reference. Yep. Yep. Cool. Who knows? Who knows? Yep. All right. Well, we'll be covering um, the last three episodes um, once they have aired. So stay tuned for that. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but we'll figure it out. Um, thank you, Chris, for coming on to the show and sharing your thoughts. Uh, anytime, is there anything, anytime. You, anything you'd like to plug or let people know where to find you or anything like that? Uh, play Pokemon Go. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back All right. to back, circle back around to the, the first part of the show. Pogo. Yep. Sure to put my friend code in the chat. Like I'm all I'm all for it. It's uh, oh yeah. yeah. It's my primary. It's my primary pop culture reference. The high school okay. kids are playing it. So okay. So yeah. <laughs> um well yeah that's podcast on the rocks episode 66 you should um check out killing the flower we thank them for our theme song their content is available on instagram youtube and spotify um we do this show weekly here on twitch you should follow us uh youtube facebook twitter go ahead and follow us and like and share and everything there as well the 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 feedback is appreciated the thumbs up is appreciated and if you listen to us on the podcast directory of your choice go ahead and leave a review there as well then it will be recommended to more people so uh thanks for joining us and uh you guys have a good night thanks cheers everybody cheers